All right, good afternoon, viewers, and welcome to the 2023 Men's and Ladies Newfoundland Curling Provincial Championships, being brought to you live from the Remax St. John's Curling Club. Uh, I'm Rob Thomas. I'll be uh, hosting today's game alongside of my play-by-play -play co host four-time Briar Rep, Mark Noserly. Today we will broadcast the first draw of the ladies' side while keeping an eye on the four men's draws. We'll keep you up to date. So Mark, I don't think we could uh, have two more decorated skips uh, unless we went back to the late 80s and early 90s and saw Sue Ann Bartlett and Kathy Cunningham. These two girls, uh, these two teams are very, uh, very well represented. We have Heather Strong and Stacy Curtis. So what do you think we can expect out of this, uh, this game? Well, Rob, if past history is any indication, both these teams are more of a defense first as opposed to an, uh, an aggressive stance on their on their tactics. So I would expect a pretty closely fought game. I expect the score to be close and I don't see either team putting up say double figures in points. I'm thinking you're looking at 7-5, 6-4, 8-7, that type of score. There's your prediction. Pretty close. There you go. So uh, we did have a little bit of technical problem so we've actually joined these teams in the second end and uh, just as Mark said he was right on the nose with this. It was very defensive first. Really only one or two rocks in play, and uh, it ended up to be a uh, blank end by Stacy Curtis. So she retains last rock in the second with no score. Just for our view viewing audience, uh, this year now they've started with the, it's called the no tick rule. It's in addition, to the fr in addition to the free guard zone rule. And what this is, if one of the first five rocks are thrown and they're in the free guard zone but touching the center line they cannot be removed off of the center line till the sixth rock and play if they are moved off the center center line the uh, not offending team can either put the stones back to where they were prior to the violation taking place or they can leave all stones where they may come to rest so that's just a little new uh, twinkle in the rules for the viewing audience that are not quite up to speed on that yet yeah, I think uh, probably uh, evens out the game a little bit if you're behind late in the game. It uh, gives you a little bit more of a chance to come back. Uh, I believe that's sort of the, the, the idea of the rule, Mark. That's, I think that was the, uh, the gist of why the rule came in. The very top-level Grand Slam teams are so adept at that double peel that uh, whether it's the five-rock rule, the no, no guard rule, the two-rock rule, or whatever, it makes no difference to most of them because they, they're so good at it. But for the mere mortals, it just gives people a little more of a chance in the last end. But that said, Rob, both these teams have that double peel capability with the second and third throwers. So again, uh, I don't, I don't uh, see a lot of rocks in front, especially on the center line once you get down to the, the, th the third and skip throwing. Okay, now we can see uh, we're getting a little bit of action here. I kind of miss what might have happened there, but. Uh, Seeing Camille come around the guard for the second time behind, uh, uh, there you go, behind Rock. Now you get a good look at it. Okay, now we're going to get some rocks and play in the second end. And before we did get on the air, you said that uh, you, you felt that uh, they wanted to get their feet wet in the first and just get warmed up. And it looks like here we go. Uh, it certainly looks that way. A lot of teams would have probably played the little tap back on that yellow rock, but. Uh, uh, Stacy elected just to play the draw on Camille's second rock, and she threw two beauties. So, all right. So now Brooke is attempting to uh, come in. Looks like she's a little outside there so far. Uh, most of the curl here is at the end, Rob, but they still got to, still got a ways to move. A little tick there, hard for us to tell right here, Mark. Who's the, who's the show? Who's first, second, third? Looks like Stacy's touching that top one, as if to say that that's uh, she wants to promote that now. Well, I think the top, the top one is is third shot, but it's, I don't. Th it's already in the end, Rob. They're not going to end up like that by the time the end's over, so it really doesn't we won't matter. Bother looking. Yeah, right. but I think I think that uh, on Brooks slash Rock, I think that little extra weight just keeps keeps it out there. And she never quite got the same, same amount of curl as Camille's rock. Okay, just um, now as uh, you can see Julie now, Julie Hines is delivering her. She's going to try to get by it. You can see it coming down on the right-hand side of your screen. It doesn't look like it's got enough weight to make it to the house, so she'll try to open that a little bit and 
guard both sides of the... Uh, she's a little short on the weight there, Rap, but again, not a terrible shot if you're uh, the Devereaux squad. But it does give a small opening to, to Heather Strong here. But this rock needs to be in front. It can't be, she can't be as deep as her last one. So Brooke Goslin throwing second stones for Stacy. Laura Strong, I'm not sure if we've introduced. Laura Strong is the lead. Uh, that's uh, Heather's sister. And Jessica Wiseman plays third. So here's, uh, here's Brooke's rock coming in. Looks like it's pretty good control weight there. It looks like it's going to be in a good spot for Heather. Well, it's going, that rock there is going to be hard for Stacy to do anything with it. I think she can just see enough of it, but it's the kind of rock, if, if you're a hair wide, you end up running it in on your own, but if she can hit it on the nose or just cross it a hair and get that little inside roll, well, she's in great you shape. You can see it on the left side. She seems to think that there's a little bit of air there. She indicated she wanted to uh, wanted to Julia to hit and actually roll in towards the center line. So it looks like a, sort of a board weight shot. Uh, Girls are on it now, and just off and on is a good sign. There's now Camilla's trying to hold a line there now. Looks like she's going to get by. That's a good rock. That's a good rock. Now it's pretty much no doubt that uh, <laughs> that Stacy is lying her too. And uh, with last rock, she's in uh, pretty good well, shape. Looks like Heather's going to be all in. Forget running the guards. She might have heard you there as she stepped back now to take a second look. Well, personally, I think uh, doing something with the front is going to open it up. Heather does have the hammer. Yeah, she's going to run the, the try to run the middle one right back here now, I believe. Because of the way those guards are on up, Rob, you could get the double guards and run the yellow one back because of that stagger. Mm -hmm. It's hanging out. Laura's now sweeping to try to help it curl a little bit. It's going to take the straight she peel. Takes the straight peel and stays in play. I'm not sure if that's where she wanted to stay. No, I don't think. I would think Stacy's going to play a guard here now. A little, a little nervy here in the second, second end. This is a uh, in the ladies' side. Uh, there's uh, there's three teams, uh, so it's a double round robin. So that will. Uh, they will play each other twice, and this is the first one. Sarah Hill, the uh, defending champ, is actually the third team, and uh, she'll come on tonight. Looks like Stacy got the broom down, down now for a guard, Rob. Just try to fill the hole, I believe. I don't think she called it at the end to come in, even though she was looking at that. <coughs> Erica Trickett, oh, sorry, Erica Curtis now. You'll have to forgive me because I'm going to go back to the Tricketts and the Devros for sure. And the Cunninghams, but uh, Erica now, this uh, your right uh, mark. It's, as you can see, it slows down, and she's just trying to block the hole. Not sure if she's going to get the hole blocked here. Uh, it's pretty close. I'm hard to tell from our vantage point if he can get a rock through that hole or not. I think uh, you can see there. Yeah, you can. You can certainly get through the hole, but that top blue one on the re of Remax is really in the way right now. I don't know if she can get to the shot rocks where she wants to get. Well, the danger here, if Heather tries to come through that hole and takes the rock on the Remax sign and opens it up, Stacy's probably going to come around again. And then H Heather doesn't really have a way to get in. So a lot of thinking here already in the second end. Uh, you certainly, you know, although it is ten ends and not the, uh, as y you might have mentioned, I mean, these girls aren't used to, uh, neither are the guys used to play in uh, ten ends these days. Everything has gone to eight. So it's a bit of a longer game and, and they keep that in mind. So if you're going to give up a big end, certainly early is the time to do it with lots of time. But you're going to try to. Uh, well, it's getting to the point now. Heather's got to start thinking about making sure she can score one with the way the rocks are lined up here. It's, the angles right now are heavily favoring the Devro team. And, and actually Devro does have last rock. She's, can't, 
tell if she's going to get off that blue. And she moves that one back. I don't know, Rob. That really helps Heather that much. It almost acts as a guard yep. to prevent the draw coming in. Well, Stacy's going to make a move on that one. Uh, <coughs> These are not the kind of shots I like. You don't like trying to make it for the other guy. and It's a difficult shot to get by without uh, doing some damage to what you already have there. So she's uh, indicated she's going to throw board weight. That's backboard weight, Eric uh, Curtis. And she's going to try to remove it. And I guess, Mark, stay right there. I don't she know. She doesn't want to roll out. I don't know if this is the the best shot to play in this situation. Now, again, even if it's not the best call, if you make it, it's perfectly fine. But I think there's other options. But they need to get by. A little tick there. This well, is going to change the complexion here. Well, all that's going to do now is give Heather a chance to get back into the middle of the middle of the rings. So I think now that they've given given an, an advantage back to Heather here to, to try to get out of it or at least limit damage. Yeah, for sure. So as we said, a lot of experience here. So I mean this is uh, this is where our comparison to chess on ice comes in because uh, you can see Heather and Laura now saying if we do this they're going to do that and then we'll be able to do this. And Without last rock, you want to make sure you're you're cutting the rings down and making it as hard as you can for the uh, opposition to get a deuce, which is sort of the uh, when you have last rock in curling, the, the the two is your that's your goal. Anything over is great, and a one is uh, always good for the other team. But so I think Heather is just playing a little tap tap here and uh, be right in front of the blue one. Heather's yeah, Rob, I'm going to see if I can get a time here now in this draw to see what we got in terms of uh, ice speed here now. <laughs> so Heather being a lefty, this is her intern. It's coming to the hog, not sure if she's got enough to make it here, Mark. No, it's going to come up short, Rob. That was a 17 second. <laughs> so draw weight's probably about 15.5, which is fairly quick, but that was just short. <laughs> And that's going to give a big advantage to Devereaux here because now Heather's blocked her path on that outturn side or her intern side. And if Devereaux gets around here now on her intern to the top of the forefoot, I don't know how uh, Heather's going to have a hard time stopping a big end here. No, might be the second end, but this is a big shot in this game. Well, Rob, in the game we did yesterday afternoon, uh, Simmons picked up a three-ender in the second end on Trent Skeynes, and that proved to be the TSN turning point. Yeah, that's right, that's right. And uh, Skeynes couldn't get back in the game. And we could see something similar here now in the second. When you're, when you're dating with top, top flight teams, uh, a three-ender is a big end. Two-ender sometimes is a big end, but a three is a, a real game, possible game breaker. Well, it changes the uh, the mindset for sure. It lets uh, the the team that scored the three get a little more defensive, and uh, you know throwing hits is always a little more comfortable. So we'll see uh, see what Stacy does here. She should have a good idea of the uh, the speed of the ice now. As you can see here, she's talking back and forth to her girls. They're communicating what what they've seen and what the times are. So I think she'll have a pretty reasonable shot at this. I'm thinking here she needs to throw about a 15-5. So we'll get another time here now and see where we are. Yeah, okay, well the girls are just cleaning it. Now they're starting to dig in a little more. But, uh, comes towards the, uh, the hog line. It looks like great weight. It's all about the line now. She's, got, she's 16, hog to hog. Camille just switched in, which makes it curl harder. 16. Wow, that's really quick. Huh? Uh, that's ice is pretty fast through the day, Rob, and that's a great shot by Devereaux. Yep. Yep. You got some. Uh, you got some problems here, Heather. You're gonna have to. Uh, 
take a really good look at. Well, now, Rob, what's, what's interesting to note, Rob, is this started with the two come arounds that Camille Burke made. Absolutely. To the pin, and then she came down on top of it again. Yeah. And the strong team has been in trouble ever since. And that was only the third rock at the end. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah. fourth rock at the end. Yeah. So, that tells you how important lead rocks are. They dictate how the whole end plays out. Couldn't agree more as a pretty much a lifetime front ender and when you get to this level it's uh, your your lead it's sort of a stereotypical but your lead has got to be able to stay above the the T line and draw your second has got to be able to clear everything and but uh, you know your, your leads are, are what sets up the end and proof in the pudding right here Camille Burt two great shots and all of a sudden now Heather's in trouble I guess she's gonna try to come back to the back one is she uh, well, she, she has no margin of error. She got to just skip by the one Devro just threw and stop. <laughs> yeah. So she has the, her, her tolerance on this shot is about a foot. Yeah, and she is really short here. Yeah, so this will be a, 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 a draw around, a long way around, but uh, almost the same shot for. Yeah, I don't know, Rob, season. if she got fooled by draw weight here on that different, going on a different side, but that. Uh, we both know how strong Heather is, and the, the miss it by that much, I don't think, was in the cards. Yeah. But no. this is a draw to the forefoot now, or almost a forefoot for a four spot. So this could be potentially, even though it's the second end, could be a game, a game end here. <laughs> yes. Well, <coughs> again, sorry, excuse me. I mean, it's the big difference here is that it is ten ends and not eight. Um, so it does give. Uh, does give Heather a chance, but you're going to see a lot more rocks in play. You're going to see a lot more gambling by Heather, and uh, it'll be interesting to see how the next couple of ends go. Well, yeah, I know it's a. Is there, you're going to give up a big end, Rob. Give it up in the first or yeah, second end, right, yeah. and at least you got eight ends to come back. But it's going to be a, an uphill battle, and the way Heather's going to have to approach it now is uh, you go hard or go home. Yep, yep agreed. And, and it's only the first game, so if it doesn't pan out, a lot of games left. You're not out of the not out of the tournament by, by any stretch, and you can still you know win the whole event. But uh, if he waits and you know too much longer to go at it, uh, she's going to run out of events. So <coughs> she has Stacey enough time to come back, but she got to get a couple of points on the board next end. Stacy coming over there now. Camille is just sort of guiding this in there, so you know that that's uh, going to be really good. Oh, yep. <coughs> so that, that is a four point four spot. Four. Big end. Stacy Curtis, four to nothing after two. Stacy over Heather Strong.
Okay, we're back, and uh, as you see now, the score is updated uh, four to nothing, and uh, for Curtis. So while uh, while they're just starting their uh, their next end, you see now that Heather has gone into the offense now and gone to a corner guard. Let me quickly just run down what the men's games are, <laughs> and uh, quick score. So on um, ice one, we got Greg Smith and Trent Skeins, both of them at one and one right now, two to one for Greg after two ends. On ice two, Ryan and McNeil Lambswood and uh, Andrew Simmons. Andrew's at two and zero. Oh. Ryan's at one and one, and right now, fairly defensive, just one to nothing right now for for Lambswood. Ken Pettigrew and Nathan Young. Ken's at two and zero, oh, and Nathan's one and one. So there's two blank ends. So there's a lot of uh, not not many rocks in play on that one. So nothing, nothing on that one. And the last game is the two teams that are zero oh and two right now, looking for their first win. Dave Thomas from Port of Basque and O'Leary from St. John's. Right now it's two to one for Dave Thomas over O'Leary. So back to our game, Rick. Well, folks, that's your cross country update by Rob Thomas. To keep everybody on their toes. And uh, I can see a few fans starting to come into the club here now. So we we'll try to keep the, the crowd under control here. Well, I think as the week goes on, the fans will get more and more. It's a big, a big, big week here in St. John's. I mean, the three teams and the ladies, of course, it's uh, <coughs> the big the, the big story on the men's is, of course, that our own Brad Guizhu is already Team Canada uh, at the Briar this year. So these eight teams are uh, really hungry. And, you know, re really, Mark, I think, you know, on the men's side, probably five of them could legitimately win this. And uh, it's, it's going to be a, a, a pure dogfight till the end. It's pretty wide open on that <coughs> side. Um, once you get the, uh, the Gucci team taken out of the mix, because you're Team Canada, the men's side is, that's why the interest is so high, because it's wide open. Absolutely. And uh, there's probably only uh, one or two teams really, I don't think, capable of pushing through for the entire week. But again, those teams are strong enough to ruin somebody else's chances. That's what it's all about here, playing the spoiler all the time. Yeah, so we expect some great games on both sides. Obviously, you're looking at, you know, two of the women's teams, and, and the one that we're not seeing is actually the two-time defending champ. So, you know, uh, again, here we're going to see lots of great rocks, and I don't expect to uh, to, to see very many blowaways, well, and I expect this one to get a little closer. Well, Rob, one thing about, uh, you know, the uh, Tankard and the Scotties at your club here, it brings out a lot of former provincial winners to, to watch. And I just noticed uh, one of the spectators here that just came in, former Newfoundland and Labrador uh, Winter Games ladies gold medalist, Nancy Pelly. No, that's a long time so ago. There you go. You Hi, never know Nancy. who you're going to see. Good to see you here. Good to see you. Yeah, we've got. Uh, there's lots of people who come come back and uh, and watch some of this. I can see. You know. And we're also we can see the uh, the under twenty one team. I think Mark is here. You might know those guys, girls. Well, there's a number of. Uh, on both the men's and ladies' side, we do have junior representation in the field. I know on the men's side there's two under 21 teams and on the ladies side there's no junior team but just about every curler has come up through the junior program. Exactly. So and uh, the average age with some of these uh, teams now is, is getting younger all the time. It's uh, getting to be a young person's game, Rob. Ah, it's good to see that's it. That's why we don't play much anymore. That's right. Well that's why they invented seniors and masters, Mark, for us. Uh, that's. Uh, I That's don't play Masters, do. Rob. Too many old people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I look forward to it because I'm back to being one of the young fellas. So we're looking at uh, now, I mean, this is not exactly what uh, Heather didn't want. She's actually clearing guards, uh, and she's down four. But now this is looks like it's going to be a great shot. She's tickled all three here and gotten rid of two of them. Got everything going. So got everything going. So she's opened up her uh, her house again. So it was a necessary play, but Heather would much rather be drawing right now, down four. Well, Heather has a couple of corner cards going. Stacy's going to try to eliminate one of them. I'm assuming she must be playing across the face because the way she's playing it here now, I think she can run it off her own and still mm -hmm. spill it into the rings. But again, if you hit it just exactly where you want, you could get rid of both. Okay, we're at Thirds Rocks. This is uh, Erica Curtis. And uh, coming down, she makes contact and clears the guard. Yep, good shot. 
But it does keep, uh, gives Heather a chance to get around her other corner, so. You're not gonna, you're, you're not gonna rattle Heather Strong. I mean, this is, it's not the first four enters she's given up, and she's come back in a lot of games. She's very, very smart curler. It was one of the best strateg strategists probably Newfoundland has, has ever seen, right up there with the top. So you're, you're not gonna beat her just because you got a four enter. Now, Heather has, uh, is known as one of the best female shooters we've ever developed here in Newfoundland. And I agree, Rob, you're not going to rattle her. She's been around too long and seen too many games. And a lot of games she's been behind and come back to have won. But that's not the shot she was uh, looking for here. That's help there. Yeah. So a little, little trouble with the ice so far for the... Heather's team, and they're going to have to make those. Uh, I think Heather's going to have to try to, to settle the team down a little bit here. And uh, again, down this end now, Heather's going just just looking for a two-ender. That's right. To get back in the game. To can't let the game get away too early. And we'll go from there. So here's Erica's second shot, another peel attempt. And uh, she just tickled it. Don't know if that's going to get all the way out. I mean, it's fair enough, but Heather can decide now if she's, oh, no, oh, she's just going to clean it up by the looks of it. And I, I think here, Mark, because it's a 10 end game. If this was an 8 end game, would she be trying to freeze or would she try to come around? The I think in an 8 end game, absolutely. I don't think, 8 end game, you can't wait. You got to go hard to get back in the game. 10 end game, you got a little bit of leeway. So she's just playing the open hit here now. She's almost I don't know the same blank. Uh, yeah. You still have a crack at two. You play a free, so she could even come around the corners on the other side, but they're almost too far over. <laughs> I'm more of an offensive person. I, I would probably play the, the, the freeze yes. or a little tap back. I'm, I'm quite positive you would, knowing you pretty well. <laughs> yeah, well, we've, we've played <laughs> together quite a while. We have. So, and I would have been in the hack ready to throw the freeze. But uh, I think Heather's thoughts, or maybe the, the maybe the team hasn't quite got everything together yet, and let's uh, let's get out of this end and try to set up a bigger end next time. Because you well, that, really that don't want to be forced to one. Pardon? You really don't want to be forced to one. You don't want to be forced to one, but that would have been her rationale that is not really set up for uh, a two ender, and you know even if she makes a perfect freeze, you got to make it perfect to keep the two in play. If he doesn't, there's a chance Stacy could be able to force the one, which is not what Heather would want. Yeah. And, you know, for most people watching, it's not that offensive play or defensive play is right or wrong. It's just a style that teams would have adapted, probably in consultation with their own experience and with their team members and their coach on how they want to approach different situations. Uh, with 16 racks thrown in any given end, there's no way to uh, play out how all the combinations will ever work. So you just got to have a sense of how you're going to play through the end. When they started the third end, Heather's team, they would have said, okay, we're going to try to get two. But at some point, uh, you decide, well, it's not working, cut our losses, try to keep the hammer and carry on to uh, the fourth end and see and try your luck again. Exactly. And again, she does have uh, another thing that is working for her as as she tries to climb back is going to be that no tick rule that you uh, you talked about in the uh, in the first when we first came on so she will have chances to get lots of guards around when she wants to get her multiple first but when she doesn't have last rock and she's trying to steal she's going to have advantage she's going to have chances so this is uh this is open now heather made the open hit stacy's second shot now she'll try to hit and stick force uh force Heather to hit and roll out on her last. I'm, I'm really impressed with the weights that they're throwing out here uh, in, in, on the corners. They're, they're not overthrowing it and it seems to be staying fine. You can see where the ice is that Erica has. She's right on the rock so it means on the outsides that this, uh, this ice is staying nice and straight and nice and true but there's a bit of curl on the draw. So the ice has been great. Well Rob, with our ice, uh, our ice is quite good. And you know that's a testament to the amount of effort that the ice crew and Harold Walters and his team put into it. But our ice is similar to arena ice, is that if you got more than bumper weight, they tend to run pretty straight. 
uh, draw weight, pack weight, you can get a lot of a lot of curl, four and a half feet, in most places. So it's really good ice if you got a good sweeping team. You can make a l awful lot of rocks. But again, it's also good ice if a team is up. They can run hits, just put the broom on the rock or into the into the rock and throw it straight, and it'll run straight for you. And so it's easy to peel, and you know, for the team that's up, it's great. Yep. And two good sweeping teams we do have too with. Uh, Camille and Julie on the front end for Stacy, and uh, Brooke and Jessica actually sweeps, uh, throws third, but she sweeps the skip rocks, as you see right here. So really good sweepers on both sides. Jessica on this now to make sure she gets the roll out. And it looks like it's gonna be okay. There's the hit, there's the roll, yep. so there's the blank. So that's the second best option for Heather. I mean, obviously she would have liked a multiple, but the blank end is as uh, good as she's going to get right now. So still, after three ends, four to nothing for Stacy Curtis over Heather Strong. It's just, it's, even though it's only three ends in, Rob, you look at, there's two blanks, but then the four jumps off the board at you. Absolutely. We'll so. be right back. Right, we're back now in the uh, third end. Again, Heather now with uh, Last Rock is going to try to set up some corner guards. And uh, right now with Laura there on the sponge towels, right there. That one, of course, is not allowed to be hit yet, so that's in the free guard zone. So uh, Stacy put her first one in, and Camille came a little deep for her first shot, but now she'll try to guard it up. Yeah, but she won't, she's going to want to guard fairly tight, and if it slips in, it's not the end of the day. But she's going to want to probably say a foot in front on the center line. And if it comes in, it's okay. Heather, and if it comes in, depending where it stops, Heather may play a hit and roll, but I'm, I'm thinking Heather's going to play another guard. And where the first guard stopped in what we would call zone two, because we separate the front of the rings of the hog line into three zones, one, two, and three, for communication purposes between the back end and the front end, um, if that rock had been Heather's rock had been a little deeper, she could probably could have thrown a double corner guard. But she's not even going to go to the other corner here. She's going to come right on in. The danger in that is the first crack. Uh, Stacy's still able to peel her guard because it's her own shot. So there's going to be a limited amount of guards in play right now, based on this uh, based on this call. So that probably doesn't bode well for Heather scoring any more than two points unless somebody misses misses something badly. So I'm assuming uh, Heather would like to stay, uh, she's not going back to that one, I would assume she's trying to stay in front, in front, front of the T-line, line. probably top four would be fine. Oh, sneaks by the guard there, Laura just... Uh, it's really a nice, nice come around. Nice come around, so we'll see Stacy, yep. Stacy, I would think, would run her own back here or just straight peel it. Well. So uh, has Heather done what she wanted? I mean, hate, you know, like uh, if if Stacy went up and peeled that off, I'd say Heather would feel like, oh, okay, it didn't work. But with her doing this, now there's going to be rocks in play. Now there's going to be rocks in play. And if you're Stacy, I don't know why she needs a lot of rocks in play if she's up four points. 
Could she, she, yeah, she, yeah. she could peel her own guard or pe mm -hmm. and even try to run it back if she wanted. If she peels it, what does Heather do? Heather got to go guard it again, in which case at some point you come in, you draw it, you apply two, and she's only looking at a two under. But yep, now yep. Stacy's mm -hmm. inviting more rocks in play, mm -hmm. and probably it, it, um, Heather still can't hit the guard. I don't yep. think it's only the no. That's no. This would be the six rock. She can she can hit the top one now. So could this, this could be a product? I wonder uh, of Stacy feeling that her team really's got a really good feel for the ice and probably feels Heather's still figuring it out here and it and, could and, be. and she's saying, okay, let's let's attack here. I mean, we'll, we'll see how the end. Well, Heather doesn't want to peel the guard because it, all she got left up front then is that corner guard, and right now she's got to get do something with the rocks in the middle before she can utilize the corner guard. And that rock I, is probably edge on edge, so to get inside and get a little roll behind the blue guard, it's going to be awful tight. Yeah, it will be. You saw Heather as she uh, she put her broom back there behind the back line, so she's indicating to Brooke she wants her to throw just heavy draw weight just outside of the house. Try to come by that blue really, really tight. So uh, here's uh, here's Brooks see it coming toward the hog line. Nobody's sweeping it yet. Uh, means it's I think the line's a little wide here, Rob. And I don't think this is what Heather was hoping for. So that, yeah, so did it promote it to yellow, but it's still behind the corner, so it uh, it keeps her yellows in play, so it, it's, it's going to get interesting now. Okay, Stacy seems to think that that guard is long enough that uh, she can get around from the uh, the intern side? Well, I don't think there's anything Stacy can play on the intern side that's going to really be advantageous to it. Even if she blocks that draw path, Heather can still come through on the intern side to get to the back one. So she wants to keep those two options open. So if she hits this, it eliminates one of Heather's stones, and they could be lying one, two, and three. So effectively, that top yellow rock is out of play. Oh, sneaks by. <laughs> Okay, nice shot by Julie. We're getting some some rocks behind the T line, which will be uh, Heather's friends. Now they're sweeping that as if it might have caught up on something because it did make a, a big move at the end. The key to this rock, to Heather's playing the run back on the yellow. She needs to keep the shooter at all costs. If she hits it right, they could lie. You could make a double here, maybe even a triple if you hit it just right. But the key is keeping the shooter and having two yellow rocks in the rings yeah. if you're Heather Strong. Jessica sweeping it to keep it straight, so it should be close. There's the tap back one, and she stays. So she did keep her shooter in play. I wonder though, does uh, Stacy have the double attempt? Or uh, I don't think she needs double. She can hit and roll on top of the on, on in front of the yellow rock. It almost acts as a guard. And that's her call. You see that she tapped her broom. Just, uh, just playing the, the hit inside. and roll in. Yep. Eric either in front of the yellow or even behind the blue. Erica Curtis, first shot. Calling on Camille now to indicate to keep it straight. Looks like it's in good position there. Erica makes a great shot and a fantastic roll. That's a nice roll. Heather's going to come back with a little tap up here. Okay, there but is even if she makes the tap, Rob, she, there's probably going to be a double play on the two yellows for, for Devereaux. <coughs> Jessica Wiseman. Rob, I'd just like, to, just like to give a, a shout out today to our tech support, Emily Neary, who just won her very first uh, under 21 uh, Provincial Junior Championship and Fantastic. is heading off to Quebec in March for her first national exposure. That's really great. I don't great. think she's been able to wipe the grin off her face since Sunday, or since, no, actually since Friday night. Well, not only a great lead, but she's doing a great job on the technical support down here. She's the one producing this, and that's why the cameras are going back and forth. Mark and I aren't smart enough to do that. We just do the game. So uh, and we also thanks very much, Emily. I also have to give out to a uh, shout-out to Trevor Bartlett, who is our senior tech support, and he's working from home on this. So all is good. 
this is a, it's a great setup guys and uh, gives chance for anybody across Canada because all the teams like to watch uh, especially when it comes down to the final time so to have this kind of tech support and this kind of production uh, it's just it's great for the St. John's curling club great for the Newfoundland and uh, curling com community so we're so happy to have you and uh, Emily thanks so much and congratulations on your first win nationals are a lot of fun Okay, so another good shot by Erica now. She's got it covered up there. So Heather's found herself in a heap of trouble again to try to get a two. Yeah, the situation now is not a not a very positive one for Heather. She has to try to bail. She yeah. has to make sure she scores. Again, down four and, and, and clearing guards is not what she wants to do. Well, I think it's past the point of uh, trying to clear her. I think she's got to try to make a, a shot to get in around her. Well, she's going to try to peel. Again, even if she makes this double peel on the blues, they just put the guard back. I think the shot here might be try to run the blue back into the yellow mm -hmm. and try to clip the rock in the back of the forefoot. Uh, At least you get the rock out of the forefoot. Then you're only dealing with Devereaux stones biting the eight foot. So it opens up the scoring area. Blue on blue, for here we go. This is uh, Jessica's. Her shot just coming over the hog there now. It's trying to get by. Gets by and, oh, oh, oh. Okay. Got a lot of stuff she going here. the complexion again. And the, probably not to the liking of Heather, really. Because well, now Stacy's got a chance to get to the top of the floor behind cover. Uh, it's still not a good situation. If Stacy gets around here, it doesn't even have to be a perfect shot. To be to work for her, and Heather's still going to have a problem putting up two points here. Again, if you're Heather Strong, sh Heather would know that she needs to score at a very minimum here, even if it's just one, because there's four rocks in the ring. So highly unlikely that this will be a blank end. That's for sure. Yeah, and uh, as we've seen, I mean, right now, the Stacy's team have really been nailing the draw weight so you can expect this one to be pretty close and if she's above the tee and behind here Heather's got some problems. She's had a good draw weight so far in the game so I expect to see something pretty close again Ralph. They're working on it here. Girls are keeping it clean. Oh, they're off again they're off so again, that's so a great indication. But with draw weight it'll finish here. As we talked about earlier, once you get down anything less than board weight, you'll get a bit you'll of movement. You'll probably see... Uh, but that got a lot of curl to do. Mm -hmm. She might have hung it out a little bit wide or had a little bit too much ice here. Draw weight wasn't a problem. We had it at 15.8, so 15.5 to 16 is what draw weight is in that range. Really perfect weight if she had to make the little move If in. that was over a foot, it would, yep. have been, would have been golden. Yeah. But it gives an opportunity here now to Heather. She could, Mark, I think she could touch that back. She could make the duck. Could she make the roll there too? But I think it looks from my vantage point like there's enough room. Barely, yeah. But I think she's only playing to push it out of the forefoot and get a little roll behind. I'm not sure she can make the roll and lie one, but at least then you'd give Devereaux something to think about. Big shot here, <coughs> Heather Strong down four to nothing in the fourth end. She has last rock in a little bit of trouble, but uh, this one can help her a lot. Indication that the weight was more than they wanted, but uh, with Jessica on it, it means they're trying to keep it straight, which is a good sign. change gears there in the uh, call an audible there mark and call the double I, I think I think that was uh, what we would say uh, number two option yes I think so yeah as so you would say yeah. called an audible yes. but she shot rock now and they got the rock off the Devereaux rock off the forefoot so what it does regardless of how what Devereaux does it opens up the scoring area for a strong score one yeah, yeah. Again, she has to score next. You know, that's that's the bottom line. If it's a one, it's a one, and then they'll go into steal mode. But she can't give up another one or two points here. Now, to think about thing about where this yellow rock rolled, I don't think it's possible for Devereaux to jam it on the back blue one. 
I, I think is edge on edge with the yellow guard or pretty close to it. Are you surprised she's going out there? Maybe there's a bit more room than, than we, we, we can see here. Well, we haven't seen any rocks come down inside out in this area. Yes. So maybe they just have a comfort level, but they know where to put the broom for this out turn. Stacy Devros, first rock in the fourth. Just keeping it clean, and now uh, you see Camille jump on it. Trying to keep it straight here now. Keep it straight. Is it getting a little bit of curl this time? Oh, that's a great shot. She didn't actually didn't quite get the, the amount of roll that she wanted, so it it's gives Heather a pretty much an open hit, Rob. But it's but it's still there's, we've seen a lot of rocks hit wide here and roll. Yes, and she can't to, roll very much. So she hasn't got much room. She hasn't got a lot of room to work with. So I see. I think you're going to see a down weight here, maybe just a hack weight shot. And let the sweepers try to control the flow of the curl. And again, you, you got she has to be aware that you can't be tight here. If you hit the guard, it's a three spot. Yeah, exactly. And pretty much game's over. So I think you're just going to throw a down weight here and a nice easy tap back. And even if she jams it on her own back blue one, I think Heather would still be shot. I think if she gets to the nose, yeah. I, think I think she's shot. If she shot gets no to the nose, what. I think she's okay. Yeah. Big shot. Heather Strong. Fourth end, she's got to score one. The great communications, she's letting the, the other girls know exactly what she's going to throw. So here it comes, last rock in the fourth end. Big shot. Coming up. Jessica starts to sweep it, which wants to keep it clean, which is a good sign as long as it doesn't curl too much, but looks good as it comes over the hog. That's a great shot. Nice, okay. nice rock for Heather Strong there. So big rock for the one point. It does uh, put her behind the, the eight ball now, down four to one without last rock. So we're going into the fifth end and... Uh, We'll be right back. Okay, we're back. As uh, you see, Heather put up her one point. So, as we say, four to one now for Stacy with last rock after four ends. While they're throwing their lead rocks, give me a chance to uh, take a quick look across the sheets for anybody wondering about the men's games. Uh, Greg Smith now is up three to one after three on Trent Skeins. Both teams at one and one. It's a big game. Uh, Ryan McNeil's Lambswood has actually gone up two to one now over. Andrew Simmons, and uh, he could he'd like to win that one. Simmons is two and zero. Oh. Ken Pettigrew is two and zero oh against Nathan Young, and uh, right now Pettigrew is up one to nothing after four. Very defensive game there. And in the last game, we've got uh, Young O'Leary is up now four to two over Dave Thomas from Port of Bass. So that's a rundown on uh, what's happening across the ice. We'll get back to this one, and uh, so now it's all about the center guards for. Uh, 
for Heather Strong. She's going to try to put up as many guards as she can and then uh, try to get into the forefoot first. You can see that uh, Stacy's uh, lead, Camille, has absolutely put one on the top of the, the, the house to cut down the the, uh, the area to get in there. And now she's going to come around. As you see that one lie there. You'll see Stacy indicate that she wants Camille to come around again. So if she can put another one above the T-line is really important here. If she can put another one above the T-line, uh, she'll, she'll have Heather on the run early. R really keen ice conditions as uh, Camille lets that one go. From my vantage point, I would never think it was going to make it, but uh, the girls are working hard at it. And, uh, some uh, get by the guard. does so another great shot by Camille so she's got this end yeah set up pretty good that's why I got a couple of seconds I know we did talk about yeah, how much experience is on the ice uh, just let me go through this uh, impressive resume um, I'll start with uh, Stacy's team Stacy's been to five Scots uh, I can give it years 2011 13 16 17 and 18 and Julie was with her for uh, three of those in 2016, 17, and 18, and with Erica once, so she's had four, and Erica herself, Erica Curtis, has had uh, three Scots, and uh, we got on the other side, of course, Heather Strong is just way up there with all the top people in, in all of Canada with 12, 12 Scott appearances, I won't give you the years on those. Laura's actually got eight, and Jessica's got two, so we've got 34 Scott appearances on this one sheet. And uh, there was a Scott class shot right there by uh, Brooke as she came around both guards. Now Stacey will start trying to clean everything up now that she's allowed to do it. Well, it looks like uh, as, uh, as last end we're Heather's in steel mode and trying to generate some guards out front and Stacey's going to try to control the scoring area. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, there's a lot of granite move there. And uh, has left uh, just one rock in behind and it's one of Heather's in around the, uh, the center guard. So that's what she wants to do. So she'll call a second one in now and you'll see Stacy uh, clearing. Brooke Goslin now with her second rock of the end of again the mission here for uh, for Heather and it looks like it's mission accomplished again here for Brooke with another good looking shot as she skates by the guard puts another one in behind and uh, freezes her own so lying two behind the guard Stacy will immediately go up and just clear the guard. Well, from Stacy's point of view, Rob, she's just happy to score one here now. Keep control of the game. And uh, if she can score one, she's going to take a four-point lead into the half. If she get any more than that, it's a bonus. So right now for her, it's about limiting what Heather can, what points Heather can put on the board. Here's Julie's clearing attempt. Clears it off, and with the keen ice, she rolls off very easily. But at some point, Rob, if Heather keeps putting back this guard, mm -hmm. yep. uh, Stacy's going to have to make a run back, or she's going to be drawing full forefoot against two That's because they're how they're lined up. Yep. So Heather just looking for this now in a part of zone two, which is out around where the Scotty's logo is. Uh, keep it as far as you can as a guard, but far enough that it makes the run back difficult. Right. If yeah. it comes a bit tighter, it'll increase the chances of Stacy probably making a potential run back. And you can see the girls are backed off this one as if it's got lots, and she'd ideally like to get to the center line side, but here it comes. It's got, uh, uh, looks like as, it as you mentioned, the, the, all the curl is at the end here. Yeah, looks like as it comes down, you'll see it coming closer to the center line, and that's a great shot by Jessica. Great guard. Nice. Well, it looks now like where that's a little tighter. I think uh, Stacy's going to try, try to make the run back. 
guess she wouldn't uh, she, she she wouldn't mind if it's just a clearing. Here's uh, Erica Curtis, and uh, just to let you know, of course, Erica's father, Eugene Trickett, is the uh, the coach for this team. She makes the run back, uh, but it's going to leave two rocks in play, and unfortunately for her, it leaves that card very close to the center. So this is sort of it, it's it's coming around the way that Heather wants it to come. Well, they got one. Stacy got one of the rocks off the forefoot. I don't think that rock in the 12th would probably in all likelihood won't count as a point. So it's a, it's a better situation than what it was for Stacy. But uh, still, Heather's going to try to put back and maybe a little bit of a stagger. Yes, yeah, and uh, yeah. Which will make the run back more difficult for for Stacy then, and uh, it may entice her to a draw shot, which is what Heather's going to want anyway. So Jessica now, Jessica Wiseman, and fair is fair. It was uh, Erica throwing uh, for the third for the other team, and her dad is the coach. And just as Jessica's father, Jeff Cunningham, is the coach of uh, the Heather Strong team. Coming close, doesn't want to clear it. You can see she's going to be, but she knows that she won't clear that. So that's a good staggered guard there for, for Jess, probably. Want it to be the inside, but I don't think it really matters. Uh, Stacy's really just going to stand up. It, and it's a staker guard, Rob. It doesn't really not going to make a difference. Yeah. 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 If we're in behind the staker guard, it's always a good thing. That's exactly what Heather wants right now. So here's Erica. And she's uh, now you can see. Uh, Camille jumps on it to try to keep it straight. She wants to try to clear everything she can. And it's a great shot there for got Eric. Everything, got Curtis. everything out. Got everything out. So Heather is uh, calling the guard. So that's more ice than, than we've seen to come right across center like that. Heather has been... Uh, Struggling a little with the with the draw weight, so we'll see if she can get her guard up now. Okay, Heather's first rock in the fifth end. Down four to one without last rock. Important for her now to put up a good guard and at the very least force uh, uh, for Stacy to uh, take a point here. Well, I mean, Heather needs to get the guard now on this first if she wants to attempt any kind of a steel maneuver here. It's uh, it's coming over really quick across the center. But, uh, it seems it's to be. Going it's going to be pretty close, I think, to what she wants. Yeah, it looks like it's uh, in line. I don't think. Uh, I don't think you'd see Stacy try to do too yeah. much with that, would you? I mean, yeah, it well, it may be accessible on the on the, on the out turn side because it's so long. Because it's so long, but the danger is if you just we're such a long guard. If you just hear the guard yeah. and move it like a half an inch, yeah. you missed the back one. Yeah, and and, and then and Heather comes around yeah. again, and now you're facing three, two of them in the forefoot. I think, so uh, yeah. I think the best play here being up what she is is just to peel it. Yeah, play play the scoreboard here a little bit and play the scoreboard. Yeah. And when you peel the way she's peeling, she could get the rock in the twelve foot at the same time. Mm -hmm. Just to take just that. can't hit it too thin yeah. and come off the other yellow guard. But if she peels it straight, she'll probably just have to draw the four foot for one. But there should the guard shouldn't matter too much because Heather's going to have to throw a guard back on this again. Stacy settles into the hack for her first rock of this fifth end. It was a quick whoa call right from Erica, as if to say it was a little outside, but it looks like it's going to be okay. Goes across there and doesn't do any damage on the other side, so Heather will repeat that and probably want to come a little tighter, but just uh, the main thing here now is to be fully covered. Well, as long as she guards it, Stacy has a draw for one. The thing about it, if uh, Heather could actually get it into just bite the 12 foot where the E is in Remax and still be a guard but bite the 12 foot, it would have 
probably make uh, Stacy draw against three as right. opposed to two. A little more pressure. I don't think she would have played a hit because she still couldn't score one if it's just biting the 12 foot. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So, probably is the, the call is probably to come in. I but, again, the main thing I think is. Main, the main thing is the guard. Heather settles in. Always as a skip, you like to throw the same rock twice, so you can expect this one to be very, very close. So that's Heather's out turn, correct? Yeah, well, she's a lefty. They're sweeping it. It seems to have a long way to curl, Rob. It's it's further out. That's a long way. Line. That's yeah. a long way from the center line. Uh, they're, they're sweeping it as if to bring it in right now. Well, if it's not going to be a guard, you need to get it in the rings. Well, it was, it was, a, it was a great sweep, and it looks like they did get it in, but it, it, the shot rock is wide open, which is the, uh, the, you know, the unfortunate part for her because she would have liked to cover, if she had to cover a little tiny piece of that, it would have been a it, it, Just to cover her hair makes it a lot more difficult, yeah. but now you're giving Stacy, she has about a, she can probably afford to roll almost three feet to the broomside and still be shot rock. And that uh, last stone by Heather shouldn't be a factor in this at all. So it's a straight open takeout for one for uh, Stacy Devereaux to have a four point lead. So the way Stacy has been playing, you'd expect this to be really close. The only real problem she could have is if she was lighting inside. So we'll watch Camille, because she's on the straight side, and yeah, she's working real hard right now. I think she's now gonna Stacy's got her arm. Uh, I think she's going to be okay. To say that's fine, don't worry about it, don't panic. Oh. And there it is, the open hit for one, puts Stacy Curtis back in the control at the half. with a four-point lead after five. So, uh, well, we'll be, uh, we'll be right back for the second half of the game after this fifth end break.
Okay, we're back. Uh, you can see the girls have started now in the sixth end. Uh, obviously a big lead uh, for Stacy Curtis up five to one. Now Heather has last rock and she'll start working on her guards. I'm just gonna quickly give you the uh, the fifth end uh, for the, the men's teams. Uh, we have uh, Sean O'Leary is up five to two over the team from Porta Bass. That's Dave Thomas. Right now, after a big uh, three-ender there, Nathan Young now is up three to one on Ken Pettigrew. And uh, close one on ice two, Andrew Simmons and Ryan McNeil's Lambwood is two, uh, sorry, two to two after the five ends. And I'm watching the last rock come down. It looks like uh, Craig Smith now might uh, go up four to two after five. I better not say that yet as it's drifting down. But, uh, go, uh, oh, there's two rocks left, I just heard. Okay, so I'll well, wait till after that, and I'll report on that. Mark, uh, I think you've got a little update on the uh, the playoff situation in the ladies' uh, round robin. I know, I know we're only into the first draw, but for the people that are wondering how the playoffs will pan out in a three-team double round robin, uh, option one is if one team is 4-0, at the end of the round robin, they win outright, there will be no playoff. Option two, if teams are, one team has a three and one record, one team is at two and two, and one team is at one and three, then one, team one will play team two in the final on Sunday. And the third option is if all three teams are tied with two and two records. The uh, draw to the button results will determine who gets the bye to the final, and the second and third place team will play in a semi on Sunday morning with the final on Sunday afternoon. So folks, that's your playoff picture or a playoff format I should say for the ladies uh, provincial Scottish curling championship here in Newfoundland. Okay, just a point there Mark if you could explain you mentioned that if all three teams were tied the draw to the button results can you explain what uh, what that means? Every game to determine last rock in the first end each team throws two rocks at the end of their practice to the button and they're added the totals are added so it's a cumulative total and whoever has the best draw to the button in each game gets last rock. But those uh, amounts are added for all of the four games together that they play, because you would play both teams twice, so you, there would be four opportunities to draw to the buttons. So that's a total of eight shots for, that, for any given team. And the team with the best shootout total, or draw to the button total, if there is a tie, to determine who gets the bite of the final, the results are based on the draw to the button. So that draw, you can see in the practices sometimes when it's streaming, the, the, the skips or somebody on the team plays a draw to the button before the game starts. That's not only for last rock, that is massively important at the end of the, uh, the round robin if there are ties. So that's how important those draw the buttons are to at the beginning of the game. Well Rob, those draws to the button could determine getting a buy to the final or had to play in the semi-final yeah, game, which is game. is a big deal. It's a big deal, for sure. So you're watching uh, the ladies' side here. We've got uh, Stacy Curtis and Heather Strong. The other team on the side is uh, uh, that has the buy is the two-time uh, defending champ, Sarah Hill. And the girls are uh, playing off, and the winner will actually go to the Scotties Tournament of Hearts. That's February 17th to the 26th out in Kamloops, B.C. So that'll be a fantastic trip for someone to represent Newfoundland at the Scotties. Right now in game number one, Stacy Curtis. Big advantage over Heather Strong as she's, uh, she's up by four and playing in the sixth end. And you can see she's clearing guards. So not a lot of rocks in play, uh, exactly what Stacy would like right now. No, right now the... Uh the, again, the end is not set up. Usually when you score a big end, Rob, there's, you got something going halfway through the end. And right now there's not much going good for, for Heather Strong here. They're playing a guard on a, on a, playing a corner guard on one of Stacy's rocks. But again, it'll give them two guards, but Stacy's just going to go up and peel it. And, and so uh, that's a situation the Team Strong is in, that they're really starting to have to scramble here yeah, and you'll see now that sh she'll keep putting up her guards now and uh, right now we we said in the in the second or third and you know if she got a, a two or a one you know but now she's really got to get two she's sort of really she can't be forced to a one now and no she needs to put up two points here there is no question and even heather has 
enough experience, she absolutely knows that she needs a deucer. Yeah. So I would suspect that she'll pull out all the stops. What we saw in the in the uh, third end when she played the hit on her first rack when it was over on the side of the 12 foot as opposed to a freeze. Right. I don't think you'll see that type of s that type of strategy employed here. I think she'll if that's the situation here, she'll play the freeze. So if you're a poker fan, you're going all in. All in. All in every end. Um, I did just see the end of the for you, uh, Greg Smith or uh, Trent Skeens fans. There, I uh, saw the end of there. So right now, um, Greg Smith is up four to two at the fifth end break. There, Trent will come back with last rock. <coughs> Well, Stacy made the P.O. Rob, Stacy, um, the Evero team, and so the strong team, I believe now, is coming around the opposite corner guard. Again, Heather's trying to get something going here. I think this was the right call at this time. Yep. One guard in play, you got your third's first rock. Doesn't have to be shot here, Mark, just in, in Just has to, has to be, you gotta have it that uh, Devereaux has to peel the guard. She doesn't, she wants to keep her away from the takeout. Yep, and uh, as you say, you see Stacy gets right down in the crouch and calls her. Now the thing here, she's playing the peel. The thing Heather Strong wants is she might make the peel, but as long as she keeps the shooter in front somewhere, it'll act as a guard that Heather can use. And then Heather's going to come around it again. Devereaux will hit the open one, and then Strong can come around the same guard the second time. So now you're bringing, that's how you bring three into play here, but she needs to have the shooter stay on the peel. Oh, and there looks like, oh, a little mistake there from, from America. So now we've got, uh, now we've got some play. Now Heather has to decide, will she go over and hit the shot rock now, or does she play in again? So I guess this is the difference between thinking about a two or thinking about a three right now. And I guess if you're thinking three, you come around the guard. Absolutely. So... She's, there's a bit of an opening here for the strong team. <laughs> oh, okay. We got a little, little thought going on. I guess uh, the uh, little discussion. The here. three on the other end, or unless Heather called her down, but Laura's coming down now to have a quick chat okay. with. Well, uh, just want to make sure what uh, they're going to do here. It's a big opportunity. You want to make sure. He what was Heather? Uh, uh, I couldn't see the call. Because she's in, she's standing in front, but was she calling the freeze or to come around? I thought well, she was call I, I thought she called to come around to there, like she's pointing out now there. But uh, Laura came down. I guess they were discussing the freeze, maybe. But Heather has uh, one out with her call. She wants well, to come around. The thing about it, if they make to the come around here, the outside yellow one is still accessible. I assume Curtis will play that, but if she doesn't make the double. Heather comes around that corner guard again. So she'll go a little deeper and on this And so one. that's how you bring the three in play here. Yeah, you see Laura is uh, sweeping but they need to make the come around here, and it got to be, it has to be a good come around. Line is good. They're by the guard. Only wait. they got to get by the second one. Oh, 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 a little that, tickle, that, but that doesn't, that's uh, good. don't think that hurts him any. <laughs> Great weight control for Jessica there. No, that's, that's a nice come around, and it puts the pressure right back on uh, Team Curtis to make a nice shot here. I was using Devereaux, but her married name is Curtis. But when you know these, some of these as uh, long as we have. people now for a, such a long time, yeah. hard to get used to calling them by a different name. All the young ones getting married. All the kids are getting married. Yeah, Jesse, Jessica Cunningham, of course, is Jessica Cur um, Cur uh, Wiseman. Wiseman now, and then you get the two Curtises, so it's uh, a little confusing for the older folks up here. So I think she can uh, she can see all of that outside one. So she's going to make a play at that. Well, Rob, people keep, they still know who I am. I never change my name when no. I get married. <laughs> Yeah, that's directly from Mark Power. Yeah. <laughs> so big shot here oh, for Stacy. I want to take a run of that double on the yellows. Oh, the quick call there from America to get him on. 
She looks a little tight, Rob. She does. They're not sweeping with any big... Uh oh now she uh, she's going to miss out on the back and leaving that in place. So does she come? Oh, my goodness. There's an insert in here for Heather. No. Now I guess you, now you have to, do you? Well, I still don't like to hit. I still like to freeze. Okay. Because what it does now, if she plays to freeze, Curtis will hit the open one. And if Heather, well, no, this is down to Skip's Rocks. Yeah, so or Skip the Rocks. Yeah, yeah. So just so hit July 3. Yeah, yeah. Deb, or Curtis will hit the open one and he'll have a three spot. Well, and that's, a, you know. And now it's a one point game. Poof. Big turnaround. Yeah, I mean, if she sticks here, I mean, there's no way that, that uh, Stacy's going to try to do anything, freeze that one on the forefoot. I mean, she's just going to have to take it and, and, and give up the three. So huge shot for, for Heather here. She's got a hit and stick here. Doesn't want to roll too much and, and give her a, an out. Well, they Actually wouldn't even mind rolling to the outside a little, eh? Well, they want to keep it over on this side of the sheet, stop any double attempt. Oh, perfect. On the nose. <coughs> so, no. I, I, I don't think there's any choice here. I guess, yeah, Stacy could roll probably in behind well, that one on the on the corner of the forefoot for second well, shot even if she rolls behind that shot rock it's still a tap back for three well yes it would be because there's, it's, there's it's still no wide open yeah. i don't think there's any place she's going to roll that heather's not going to have a play at three yeah, because uh, being down four two was good but if she got any opportunity to put three points on the board she's gonna i, yeah. I would think she would take it Smart end for Heather, but it you know she she got a couple of misses this end, and uh, her patience is uh, paying off. Well, you go back. The they had two good come arounds at corner guard, and that got things going. And then Stacy must have got a little tight on her first attempt on the, on yeah, the hit, hit really the guard yeah, and stayed there. Yeah. Okay, so. Julie working now to try to curl this in. They'd like the stick instead of making it the. Uh, Oh my goodness! Oh my God! Well, I think this is. Well, Rob, we can I think I think that's one of our would be a wally. <laughs> that's in our day that would have been called a wally. Yep. And uh, nowadays a flash. This is not. Uh, this end is not sort expected. Of turned, yeah, sort of turned around in a hurry. But that was two. This end you saw two. Uh, two. Two full misses. Yeah. Two full misses by uh, Stacy Deborah, which you're not going to see very often, I'm afraid. And. Uh, very oh. uncharacteristic of her. Well, this is going to really put the whole momentum into uh, Heather's hands. I, uh, it's not made yet. I highly expect that this will be made. But um, with uh, uh, she's just drawn to the full of the rings here. With that ice come down, even if she's a little strong, she'll probably be on her own. What she needs to, needs the fourth point here. Two of the girls are working this They're hard. They're working that awful hard, aren't they, Rob? They only need to touch the paint, but and here it comes now. It looks like yeah, it's it looks okay. okay. And there it is. And a four spot. Four spot. by the strong foursome, which sort of came out of nowhere rather quickly. Well, that uh, that changes the uh, the complexion of the game in a big way. So now we've got uh, five to five after six ends of play. Stacy will see if her uh, see if she can keep her head together, and she's got last rock. So well, that was the second half start that Heather Strong needed to get herself back in this game. Yep, There's no sure question did. about that. All right. Well, we'll take a minute now, and we'll come right back with the seventh end of play.
Okay, here, folks, here we are back at the Newfoundland Labrador Scotties Provincial Playoffs between Heather Strong and Stacy uh, Curtis in the seventh start of the seventh end. And I think right now we're going to have Rob give you a little rundown on some uh, team sponsors. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Uh, you know, one thing, especially being, uh, you know, amateurs as, as we are, I mean, we don't all get the, the big sponsorship like the slam teams. And it's so, so important to, to have the the community-minded uh, companies that, that help out the teams. So on Heather Strong's side, they'd like to throw a big thanks out to Altamax and uh, PAL Airlines. Thanks uh, for your sponsorship for them. And on uh, the Stacy Curtis side, um, they have a number of sponsors to help them. It's Marco, Ice Pad, Pharmasave, Kitty Vitty Brewery, the Hair Spa, and my favorite, Headline Holsteins Limited. <laughs> So the hogs are, or the, the cows are there. So thanks so much to all the sponsors who sponsor any team out here. Thanks, big thanks to Remax for sponsoring the Remax Center, and uh, of course, Scotty's and Tim Hortons, all huge sponsors, all so important to our game. So thanks so much to everybody. Well, that's correct, Rob. Any sponsor, all these top teams travel a fair bit, so any sponsorship money is uh, is greatly appreciated. And without the travel, they teams just wouldn't be uh, get that top flight competition that they need to be able to compete against the very best in our country. Got to be, you got to be competing, Mark. I mean, in our day, we played together in the you know in the late '80s and '90s, and it's so important for us to get to the mainland and do some uh, some high caliber curling against the best teams in Canada. Then when you get up to the big show, you're you're not as intimidated by you know the guys that you seen on television so it's uh, real important to be traveling and, and a lot of our top teams are definitely traveling this year thanks to their sponsors well that's right rob but uh, i mean we've had for a small province we've had a number of uh teams well obviously right now we have arguably the number one team on the planet and brad guju but even in before the guju came on the scene we had a number of teams that made good runs at the national briar title and uh, and the scotties of over the years kathy cunningham laura phillips suan bartlett and uh, same thing on the men's side, we've had a number of great junior teams. And um, I think that goes, we have a testament to, we have some good coaching here in Newfoundland. We don't have the big numbers that the big provinces had, but we have a dedicated small group. We have a lot of good junior players all the time coming up through the junior men's and junior ladies. And uh, the future bodes well. Absolutely. A lot of sports in Newfoundland quite don't have that capacity that we have. And when people, when you go to the mainland and people say, you know, you're, you got to play Ontario or BC, or you're only from Newfoundland, you know, you're not supposed to win. Well, I argue with that point all the time. I say, I'll put our curling record up against anybody. And we, we do have other sports in Newfoundland that Absolutely. do quite well away. Mm -hmm. One that comes to mind right off the bat is men's softball. Softball, yeah. yeah. We've had world-class players for a lot, long, long time in men's mm -hmm. softball, as good as anywhere on the planet. So it's not just uh, curling that does well. We have some other great sports in Newfoundland. And then there's always sports where you have individuals who, they might not have the numbers here, but they have an individual who does so. quite well away. Yep, absolutely. And every one of those would, would like to thank their sponsors. So this is so what it comes back down to is being able to travel, being able to get your uh, get your licks in against the, the, uh, the mainland team. So all good there if we get a look back to our game now as you know we're back to a 5-5 tie here and we're in the seventh end so we're into crunch time you can see that there's a couple of guards up front for stacy but uh, heather has one in play and stacy's now gonna play to take that and try to roll in behind him and she has done that very nicely so now heather is uh, okay she's getting aggressive instead of trying to run back here she's gonna get into the forefoot first. Well, the game has changed now. Seventh end, the uh, teams are now going to start looking at trying to finagle to have Last Rock coming home because now it looks like it's going to be a tight game. Exactly. So good, you know, good aggressive call here for Heather. And uh, she wants to get in first. Even though she hasn't got Last Rock, she's, uh, she can smell a bit of a steal here with the, uh, with the forefoot now uh, being able to be undercover. Well, she needs a nice, needs a nice come round. They made a couple last end, and this looks like it's going to be pretty close again, Rob. But they got the weight. Looks like the line is pretty good here. Working it hard, and got by, and got by. And we got Heather trying to carve it over like a Sunday dinner. Perfect. That would be Laura. Yeah. It's 
Stacy going to play the run back. <coughs> There's no choice. It's uh, perfectly placed there. Well, that come around forces uh, Curtis to go back up now and play the peel. Or even, I think she's trying to, she, she, she'd she be okay if she had a double back. peel yeah. now and roll everything yeah. off. She indicated a run back, so I'm sure she'll take whatever she, wh wh as long as it gets it on the center line side somewhere. Well, if she plays a double peel, no. you're probably going to see Heather hit second shot. So but we'll see how the, how the peel works out first here. Not a lot of weight here. Looks so pretty close to a run back. Uh, she gets a little help there from the uh, there you go <laughs> from the one on the twelve foot, but that's fine. That was close enough to call it. Sometimes out. those little ticks are quite handy. But there might be a, a double coming back here now for potentially Heather on the off uh, off the outside one here. You see Heather hold her broom uh, upside down there. She's asking the uh, teammate in the hack how much of it she can see and is there an inside roll available? And I believe there is. Let's see, she's calling her regular weight here so this won't be a lightweight takeout this will be this will have a bit of steam on it not much ice this is Jessica Wiseman well we'll see how this rock rolls out this is a big shot here now Rob and for Jessica this isn't real big weight for her so she, she needs to get by the yellow field. up they're off it so she must be by off and on that's a great Oh, that's a good shot. That's it's a good uh, shot. It didn't move the second one right out. So well, it moved it in that you can access it now on, a, on the uh, out turn. Yep. yep. But Stacey's going to play down to try to protect that and try to corner that yellow one. So again, Stacy does have last rock. Um, and, 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 you know, playing toward the center is not ideal for her, but uh, she definitely wants to protect the one this air. Erica throwing now her second shot of the end. Looks like it's a little tight because you see that uh, Camille is sweeping, but not off and on, which is always a good sign. It's going to be pretty close, Rob. Ooh, looks like a this looks like it's going to be a beauty. I really good. Is uh, she may even be? She may be lying too. She may be lying too, but it's the angles. Probably could have stopped an inch shorter, but uh, it's still it's going to work out. It's going to cause uh, Heather Strong a little bit of concern here. Heather wants to be careful after you know, uh, getting a big, big four in back. Uh, she really doesn't want to. Okay, yeah, I, th I think this is a good call for a timeout now to bring in the. I well, Rob, I think if she goes after it, the danger is if she hits it a little thin. It comes off the yellow one, and she doesn't get either one out. Mm -hmm. Then Stacy's drawn in line three okay. with the hammer. Well, you uh, you be the coach. Uh, Heather's called a timeout now to bring out uh, Jeff Cunningham. So, uh, Mark, let's pretend you're Jake. You're going on the ice. What are you going to tell your team? Well, my personal feeling here is I like the angle slash on that yellow guard. You're not going to draw here. It's not set up for it. It's too tough to get around the rock in the forefoot. And I think there's too m it's too easy to frig it up if you try to play that. Some, I don't think that double is there on the two blue. Have the run back double? No, you wouldn't look at that. You can open up the top one, but then Stacy's still going to, on the blue guard, but then Stacy's still going to come down on light three. But if you play the yellow one, Stacy's still got to, even if you don't make it, where's Stacy going to go? She's probably going to go to the wing. Then you got a chance to hit and roll back under. So I think for her, for Heather to get out of jail, she got to play that angle slash on the yellow. There you go. She could hit it yellow on the yellow yep. and get shot mm -hmm. and stay for shot. She could hit it across and make the double on the right. blue and lie one two potentially. Right. So you can't see it, but the girls have gone back to the uh, to the backboard because uh, the coach Jeff Cunningham uh, not allowed to get on the ice surface. So uh, he's on the back now, chatting with those with the four girls and trying to put in their head what, what he thinks is best and they'll uh, they'll play out the different scenarios as Mark just did. I don't think there's that many options for Team Strong here. <clears throat> they, After tying the game up, they can't afford to give up three. Right. So I don't think the hit is going to be an option on the blue one at all. And there's no place to really draw to without bringing three into play. So I think they're playing... Uh, Unless you're playing to go to like a tap tap, the ice, 
okay now 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 you see okay Laura's moving up to that rock yeah. so that, that definitely means that they're promoting that rock it, it, it all depends now on the what kind of weight, weight and the kind of weight they're going to throw with that ice mark I, I'm not thinking there's very much weight I like just I don't think it's going to be a full hit backboard but you're going to be I think it might be more than backboard but you can still come out of this potentially long shot guarded yep. if, you, if you hit it right yep. so that goes back to what I was saying this is the best option for strong to still have an option on their last rock not to give up a three spot so really everything here is is angle and they have to get on the outside of this rock no matter what well I think here if you're trying to go yellow on the yellow you got to hit about uh, probably like a three quarters on the broom side which we would refer to as the high side of the rock mm -hmm. and with that ice I'm thinking it's like a board so here we go Heather lefty so this is her out turn oh she's really throwing it soft this is almost draw weight mark the line must be close to what they want Oh, that's going to work out. Well, now their second shot oh, for second sure now. Shot. Okay, yeah. Well, that's, that's interesting that she'd throw that weight, but uh, they had. Yeah, they threw a 13 2 on that, which is. Uh, a heavy draw, really. It's yeah. not even a heavy, not yeah. even a heavy draw, Rob. That yeah. was probably yeah. back 12 weight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I would, uh, I would have preferred a little more weight on that. If you look at it, uh, the because way she hit it, you know, she would have been, she would have been shot now. Well, they made, they pumped promoted the second shot for sure but now that slash on the blue one is still there and roll over to light three okay. I, I'm not sure why Stacy's not playing that now because if she slashes that top blue on the yellow rolls over to the opposite side of the eight foot Heather got nothing mm -hmm. she got to play a seven foot roll mm -hmm. to get out of trouble and uh, it looks like there's plenty of room that guard but now is, is she's well playing the come around here even if she makes this Heather freezes her even if she's in front of the T-line, if she's behind the T-line, and then Stacy, Stacy's, if it was in front of the T-line on this shot that uh, Stacy Curtis throws, I'm sorry, and then Heather freezes it, uh, Curtis got a tough draw for two. If she's a little deep and Heather freezes, she might not even score one. Mm. So I don't agree with this particular shot in this situation. Right now she got strong on the run for a three-ender. But All right. Well, here's Stacy now. She's uh, she's released. You see, Cam Camille is on it, but just keeping it clean, indicating that it's pretty close. Now you'll see her start to work on it, and it's curling hard. We'll see if she gets by that uh, the top blue one. Line is really good. Oh man! Oh man! She carved that one in there. Uh, it's, well, so it's a good shot, but it's sort of a, it's a deuce. Eh? Well, it might, right now, I don't know if Heather can freeze it, and she might only oh. still be third shot. <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah. so it probably stopped in a good spot. Yeah, I, I just see if Heather If it comes a hair, a hair deeper, yeah. Heather freezes, yeah. she's second shot. She gets right. So uh, just rip it out and give her the draw for two. I'm not sure I saw Laura point yeah, so at something. Well, sometimes, you know, if you get caught a two-ender, you live to die another day. But she can't afford a three, right. so she rip it out, pro, give Stacy a Yep, maybe a try again. And give it to her intern like she did last end, and you never know what might happen. Mm -hmm. uh, Heather's got the broom down now for a, you know, for a regular weight hit. I don't think she'd ever try to stay around there's no she just has to rip this out and we'll see what Stacy probably will just decide uh, at this point of the game to draw for her too but she could like you say Mark she could try a slash so well, first thing we got to see if uh, Heather's successful in taking this well she needs to if she can hit and stay right there hits everything she can see it yeah. makes it a bit a little tougher because if, Debra, if uh, Curtis gets a little tight it could bring the one of those blue racks in front into play yeah. even though it's still an open hit and it's still quite makeable so okay so here's Heather's rock you can see that uh, Jess is off and on but right now there's uh, oh no a pick 
that picked and this is going to be a four. Look. Oh, no. Well, that's... You can't do nothing about that. That's not controllable. No, that's that's too bad. I mean, that was... Uh, you can see now, you'll see Stacy and and Erica both go out because obvi very obviously Heather's Rock uh, hooked something and it put it off course. So it's a, <laughs> it's a fairly... Well, it's a straightforward draw for a three. But Straight draw for three. She could try a little tap for a four, but she won't bother at this no, point. Stacey can't go look at the four three here in the seventh end is a huge, huge score in a tie game. That's gonna be that's gonna be tough mentally to come back from. Because it certainly looked like uh, she was in good shape to rip it out and roll away and take a two or give up give up a two. Now, uh, Curtis, she's had pretty good draw weight all game. Yeah, she's she made has, a few yeah. real yeah. nice draws, so. I would expect this to be pretty close again to the money. For sure. One of those unfortunate things in, in our game that, uh, you know, that happens to the very best, uh, you know, at Briars, at Scotty's, these, these little tiny pieces of, of uh, fluff or dirt just gets under the rock, the running surface, and completely changes the, uh, the root of the rock. So. That's where they are. Okay, so here's uh, Stacy's draw for three. There's lots of weight. The girls haven't got, touched it. You got Camille just dusting it slightly. And it's staying uh, in that straight lane. This looks a little heavy to me. She was the 13-4. Well, I that's guess we uh, jinxed her. That's saying quick. She's had great weight. Yeah, well, you never can tell. It's you a funny game. Tell. So, okay. That's a big, big break for... Well, well, two breaks, two breaks <laughs> in a row there. Yeah, well, we that's the, right. Had the, the pick on Heather Strong's last rock, and then uh, Curtis got a little heavy on hers and, and went deep, and it was only a two-ender. Yeah. So Heather's, uh, Heather's mental side will be that uh, we had a bad break, but we got away with a two, whereas Stacy's going to feel like, darn, we should have got a three. Very interesting. So a two there makes it seven to five for Stacy Curtis over Heather Strong. We're going into the eighth end, and we'll be right back. All right, we're back, and uh, in the eighth end now, we've got uh, uh, Camille Burt throwing her first rocks. So give me a quick chance to uh, go across the sheet. We got some real close games going in the, on the men's side uh, right now. Craig Smith is uh, up four to three after six over Trent Skeins. Uh We got a three to two for Ryan McNeil Lambswood over Andrew Simmons right now, also in the seventh end, and we've got a three to three tie with a young and Pettigrew after seven in. So this is a, a, a really close games there. The only one that's getting a little out of hand now is uh, Sean O'Leary now has uh, gone up seven to four and he has last rock after seven ends against uh, Dave Thomas from Porta Basque. So Mark, uh, what's Heather's thoughts now? Well, 
Heather's got to get two right back here playing the uh, eighth end. Right now, uh, with Trans to go, Strong has hammer in the eighth, so if she can hold Stacy to a point in nine, she'll have to hammer in ten. So you look at it from the point of view of two hammers to one, but she got to get back on an even keel, and she needs to put two points up here right now. So playing Laura into the house now, around the guards. There's enough, enough junk out front that she needs to get in front of the tee line here, and it looks like a beauty shot here. Top four foot around everything. And the so ball is back in uh, Curtis's court here now. So okay, she's here we go. staying aggressive too. Well, the way the lineup is, she can't hit anything. So right. if she's right now, her goal is to force strong to one and have the hammer in nine and try to blank, keep the hammer coming home. Okay. Is how she would look at this at this point <coughs> in time. So she need, and this rock doesn't have to be perfect. It got to be around the guard that Team Strong can't roll in off it, and close enough that it affects the yellow rock at the same time. So she probably got about a two foot margin to work with here, Rob. And they're on it hard here. They might be able to get it by. And it looks like it's going to creep by the guard here. Really tight. Good That's a great shot. Great sweeping by uh, Camille Berther and uh, Erica Curtis. All right, well, we got a good end setting up here now as uh, Brooke Goslin gets in the hack and looking at uh, Heather looking to say, stay aggressive. She is. She's got one shot rock behind cover, but. Well, Heather needs to get around this guard now and try to at least get to the full nose of that blue rock, which will stop Curtis from punching it up onto the yellow one. And it'll keep the. Uh, a deuce potentially alive. But again, it's all about just getting by the guard and stopping in front of that blue rock. All right, and here comes down over the hog. Looks like this one's got plenty of weight to me from up here, but uh, the well, girls are staying close to it. It's all about well, the line here now. now. Nicely. I don't think she's going to be to the nose of it. She's no, it's starting to bend here now. That's not a bad rock. Now the danger if Curtis goes after it with any weight, she may be able to put it onto her own. So if you hit it thin enough, you might be able to kill the two yellows, but it's it's got some, there's some danger involved with that. There is. This is an uh, interesting call here. So Mark, she's playing a freeze on the one that was just thrown. I, I don't have any problem with that. The thing again, you got to get inside of it. If you're on the high side at all or on the nose, I think That's then you'll see Heather just take a whack at it right. and get the, the bump bump onto Stacy's blue rock in the forefoot. So again, it's all about the angle here. She got to be just across the nose to stop that. And again, in front, and if she's short, it's okay too. Right. So, so she got yeah. a, bit, a lot of leeway here. Right. So this is, yeah, so, and, and it <coughs> from where I'm looking, I mean, it does look like it'll be a bit short. This is the, uh, what we call the pro side miss here. It's Absolutely. Not exactly where you wanted it, but it's missing it on the right side. So, uh, you know, a good shot for Julie. It, it accomplishes sort of what she wanted. Well, the thing about it, Rob, all the good teams, when you miss, you still got to get something out of it. And that's what that shot does. It still causes uh, Heather Strong to think about how this is going to play out because she needs two. Yeah. In, in my coaching days, and mostly juniors, I said, now when you're in the hack, make sure you're telling yourself, okay, I can be heavy or I can be late. I'm sure you're doing it all the time. So that's what... Uh, that's what Julie did there, and she missed on the right side, and Heather's got very little choice but to go up and remove it, so mission accomplished. Just playing the peel there. So does Stacy change I think you're going to see strategy say, now? I don't think. I think she's going to do the same thing. If, he, if, he, if the line is good and, and the weight is fine, play it, but if she's, yep. she, well, she's calling just short. That, that it's an easier shot, yep. and it accomplishes what she wants. Yep. Gives you a bit more. A if bit you more come, if you try to play it right on the yellow rock, and you're off line by an inch or so, it could spell disaster. So here, it's an easier throw, easier for the sweepers to put it where you want it. Yep. So playing percentages, and get a good result. Because at the same time, if you put it there, Heather Strong still has to deal with the guard. Yep. She has no access on that side of the sheet. To the forefoot to the to get well she might have access but it's a, re a real tight draw to get a second point so this one's going right back uh, almost exactly where uh, where the last one was so 
this is uh, right now Stacy's playing her game even though I mean uh, Heather does lie one in the back there but they're uh, she's happy to continue on yeah I don't think Heather well if, I, if Heather t continues to play the guard here just peel it what she's telling me is she's happy to have the draw for the second point to the forefoot right okay. and she's not really trying to potentially push a three spot yeah, I think, you know, well, they're probably thinking, as, as you mentioned, if she can tie it up now, I mean, then you're, you're, you're two to one hammers and you, you sort of got what you want. Okay. So, Jessica. Another, need another first nice shot. throw here now. The one thing they've. Uh, well, this looks like it's going to be what they call before. Nope. Yep. One thing they got with uh, Jess Wiseman, there's no doubt she can throw the big weight with the best of them. She's a great peeler. Well, I think, Rob, I alluded to that earlier. Both these teams here have a number of players that can throw it uh, pretty hard when they right. need to. Yep, for sure. And, are, and can peel well and hit well. Jess Wiseman being one of them. Yes, yes, agreed. Yep. And it's one thing to throw it hard, but I mean, throw it hard with accuracy. Yeah, control, yeah, yep. that's right. I, yep. Now, this one for Eric is a little further outside than she was on her first one, and probably a little bit deeper, but it looks like it's going to... That line looks a little generous, but it might come over just enough at the end. And there you see the sweeping of Camille Burt now, just kind of Camille's, a, Camille's a strong sweeper, yeah, so, is, so that does the job. Well placed. So, now we, uh, we'll see what Heather's thinking. Is there anything else that she can do? I mean, well, did she come around the whole works to the, the side of the four or five? That's what she's looking at now. Okay. If she comes around, the thing about it, on either side, if you're going to come around now, I would come around the same side they've been playing. Yep. The thing is, you can't be deep, because right. that gives Stacy right. Curtis an out. Right. Yeah, if, even if you're a hair short, you're behind the guard, you might still be able to use maybe. But if you can make get into for second rock now, but I think she's going to try to generate something here now. But it looks like she's playing a double run back there now. So yellow onto blue, onto on yellow, to yellow onto blue. On blue. So it's a quad run back. Quad run back. For Don't see them every day. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> so Jess, this is uh, you know when when she looks at it, all she's really seeing is uh, well, that first rock, and she wants to get that nearly on the nose. Jessica, Jessica Through, Wiseman, well, she can throw the weight. Says, so Laura's going to keep this one straight. It's uh, it's curling a bit much on him now in the center line. It's going to be interesting. One, it's going to be close here. Two. And just and I don't know if that's front. what she wanted. Now, what that does now is opens it up for Curtis to make a short run back to live one, two. So I don't know... Right. If she hit that on the right side, even that yeah. she needed to, I think she was a pinch they tight. They never the really got much of a good no, result out of this. Jumped right on that. Uh, no, I mean, uh, and from where I am, I can see Jess now nodding her head. No, I got, uh, I got tight on that. That's on me. Yeah. Okay. So what's Stacy looking at here, Mark? Uh, short run back on her own. Blue in the twelve foot to right straight back on the Heather's in the four foot to lie two. Mm -hmm. And there's no run back double if she makes it right straight back for Heather. So Heather's going to be, if, she, if uh, Der Curtis makes this, I should say, uh, it's probably going to take the deuce out of play mm. for Strong. But now Strong's going to have to be worried about scoring one. Right. Yes, now, yeah, if she's there. So, okay, here's Stacy. First rock in the eighth end. She's up two right now and uh, would love to be lying two after this shot. Good straight release, uh, not touching it yet. Camille is on the straight side, so it should be close. There's the raise, and there's the hit, so very well done. So they're lying two, that was a nice shot by uh, Stacy Curtis. I get, keep getting reminded by our tech support producer here that I keep referring to Stacy Curtis as Stacy Devereaux, but I've known her for so long as Stacy Devereaux. It's <laughs> hard sometimes to remember all the married names. I actually but anyway. to see on the uh, on the website the the Scots that she's gone to, and I think it was uh, she went to three as a 
Devro and two is the Curtis. So we, we're okay with Devro. Yep. Yeah. We know who we're talking we about know. anyway. Even if nobody else does. Yeah. So, Heather is, I'm not sure, is she just playing the, is this sort of a double and then hoping that her top, uh, the top blue goes across the yellow here? Well, right now she got to make sure she goes one. And right so now she has no way into the forefoot. So she's trying to hit that top one that's on the center line as thin as possible. To and, and maybe spill the shooter spill down the, a bit. And, spill, and, yeah. and put that yellow straight or, you know, back into the blue. But, so this is a big weight, and uh, Heather was one of the very best for big weight in her day. She's going to need to curl a little bit to touch that other one. Okay. I'm not oh. sure if this was the call, but let's take a look when everything settles. Well, it's better than it was. If she is, I don't, I think it's one and three for three. blue, yeah. and second and fourth for yeah. for uh, Team Strong. So I think you're just going to see a guard here. Oh no, she's going to play the draw around the line one, two. Yeah, well, yeah. The only problem with that, Rob, is so if, if she, if she plays to come around, yeah. no, the problem with that is if she happens to tick that top yellow rock and push it in for what would be Second, third, shot. third shot now and rolls over, yeah. she might give yeah. Heather a double for three. Yeah. Where if you throw it away, yeah. she can't get three, yeah. right? So if you play the guard here, because right now the, the shot for Heather would be this tap up, yeah. uh, the yellow on the blue, so if she guards that, the most Heather can get is two. Now, if she makes the come round, yeah. most yeah. Heather can get is one. Yeah. But you you might you might, depending how she shoots it or what the ice is doing here, if it uh, picks up or whatever, and she ticks that top yellow yeah, one, it might bring three into play. And bring being three, being yeah. up two, she don't want to bring. Well, she don't want to bring two into play, obviously. Mm -hmm. But you definitely don't want to bring a three spot into play. Yeah. And I mean, if she tries to come around and stays. Even with the one that's already in there, well, then Heather could have a pretty straightforward. Well, I race think this. Is, I think, uh, Rob. I think this is the right call. You, you just got to be cognizant of the fact that you got to have enough ice. That even if you get by the yellow rock by a yeah. foot, yeah. as long as you're lying one two, it doesn't really matter about the line on this mm -hmm. shot. Well, you're line, still yeah. giving so the most strong can take out of it is one. So you can see now that oh, uh, she's by the guard. It's a ton of line. So now she's got to watch that she doesn't set up a raise double. No, and she's going to go back far enough that that's not going to be a problem. So I think well, it's... Uh, strong has to... She's yep, four strong in to take yep, one here. Yep. And that's what uh, Heather Strong has indicated. Just to come down on top of that. Same type of shot. And so, uh, again, the way this rock, because of the way they're set up, if she doesn't get shot here, it's in all likelihood, it's probably yep. going to be a steal of two. Yep. Because the, the two blue rocks are so close into the forefoot, in terms of where they are, in the closest to the pin. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Is it going to be one or a two? It's, it's yeah. probably yeah. going to be yeah. a, if you're stealing yeah. one, you're probably stealing yeah, two. Gonna so it's a one for going to be one yeah. for strong, or you're probably right. be two for yeah. Curtis, right? So it's going to be yeah. one way or the other. So she knows she can come down on the back one. So I'd be surprised if she was light. But, uh, it's but all you can't, you can, well, Rob. You know as well as I yeah, do. When you're playing your draw, you can't play for backing. You got to play it for the. Now this got a little bit of curl to do. Yeah, it's looking good. And uh, I, say, I think she can touch the back one and be perfectly fine, can she? Uh, it's going to be close. I think she's okay. Well, now that draw was almost 15. And now that was probably back four. Yeah, so it was and they weren't sweeping them. Almost like so she was looking at the backing, wasn't it? They're still coming a little long on their, on their, on their draws. Draw's probably 15-5. Uh, with well, sweeping. We'll see who moves it. No, nope. okay, Laura's calling for the measure. So unless if Erica kicks it, well that's a con concession. Nope, she's gonna they're gonna measure. Well, they're gonna measure. Yeah, strong really needs to keep this game close going to the tenth end. Strong really needs to pick up the point here. A steal of one here for mm -hmm. Team Curtis uh, goes a long way to victory yeah, with two ends sure. to go being yeah. up three. Yeah, well, from my bad angle here, I, I, I do think it's yellow, but uh, we'll let the stick do the talking. Yeah, Rob, I'm not disagreeing with you. From our vantage point here, it looks like it could be uh, yellow.
but who knows. So this is, uh, for those that don't watch a lot of curling, this is the, uh, the device used for uh, when you can't tell which one is closest to the center pin. So there's a little dial on it. We won't get a chance to see it, but Eric will set it up so that the dial hits a, probably a 2 when she passes it, and then as she passes the other rock, if it's less than that, well, hers is closer, but if it's further, well, the other one is. So you'll see him probably kick or touch the rock that is shot rock and move it toward the center line. It's close. They're taking a look, but oh, so that indicates it's blue. So that would be a one. She was no, no, that would be a steal a one. Steal a one. We'll see when it goes up on the board, but usually when the uh, the other team moves yours in, and looks like the strong team is lined up on the hog line, so. This is a steal of one for Stacy Curtis putting her in full control now. Up eight to five after eight ends. So we'll be right back. Okay, here we are now back at the 2023 Newfoundland and Labrador Scotties Provincial Playoffs. And we've just gotten going now a couple rocks into the ninth end of an 8-5 score for Team Curtis over Team Strong on the strength of a eighth end steal of one for Team Curtis. Ninth end, here we go. And uh, Team Curtis threw the first one into the back of the uh, forefoot. And their second rock now is coming down on top of it. A little deep again. She's going to give strong. I think she's going to throw a corner. She needs, I don't think she can just wait till the 10th end to try to get three points. So I think she got to go hard in nine to try to get a deuce here. Two and a steal and steal again. But with the five rock, but with the five rock rule, Rob, with the no tick, you can steal two wins in a row. This is this is exactly where the Noah Tick would probably come into play if she can get her points here now and then uh, for that last end. So we have one final on the men's side so far and that's uh, young Sean O'Leary has beaten uh, Dave Thomas from Port of Bass. It's uh, make the final seven to four and uh, everything else is really really tight. We got a 4-3 game for Smith uh, over Skeens right now. It's tied four to four after eight with um, Simmons and Lambswood and Pettigrew and Young are tied 3-3 three to three after 7. So very tight on the men's side. Got a little bit of an advantage here for Stacy on the big advantage actually on the, on the first game of the ladies. Just a note Rangers. on that, Rob, with O'Leary winning his first game, both our junior teams as it stands right now have both secured a, their first victories. Uh, Nathan Young got his last okay. night and Nathan O'Leary right. got his this afternoon. That's right. Yes. So it show again shows the strength of the junior program. Right. And Mark, I think uh, both teams are going to the nationals this year. Um, I'm not sure about O'Leary. I don't think he is. Oh, not O'Leary. Because uh, Sorry. Team Perry it's won the under, Perry, under yes. 18s and the under 21s, yes. okay. and 
uh, Team Younger is going as Newfoundland 2 team. Newfoundland 2. And who's going to the winter games for for the men's side? Uh, team Tipple. Tipple. Okay. Which is not in the, they're okay. not playing the tanker, so okay. that's another junior team. And uh, Katie Locke, the junior team, under 18, are going to the Canada Games right. as Newfoundland rep. Lots here of we are great now back in. Yep, there you go. Okay. Here we are back in in nine, and a double attempt by uh, Team Strong only gets the one, but moves the two uh, Curtis Stones to the side, albeit behind the T line, which would be more advantageous at this point in time to Team Strong. So Stacy's uh, Curtis here would probably like to play a little hit and yep. roll in front of those back ones because they're available for Team Strong to freeze down now. Yeah, Stacy, anything anything yellow now is sort of got to disappear. Hey, I mean I'm being up through. I think she's yep. going to be playing it pretty close to the chest here and just banging yep. uh, banging away at those uh, yep. Team Strong stones. My uh, first year in men's back in 1980 81 actually I. Uh, Wanted to play one year with uh, a mentor of mine, uh, both in curling and in barbershop singing, Lester Bowering. And Lester, of course, back then, no free guard zone. If it ain't there, it can't score. And that's Stacy's uh, Stacy's mantra right now is uh, anything but a three. So Heather is laying it all out here, not even touching the, the blue rocks and going around her own yellow. Heather's got to try to get something going. I, I missed what the call was, but I think she's trying to play around the corner guard. Yeah, around her own. Yeah. yeah. That would be the call. Oh, Brooke has let it go. You see the girls jumped right on it. Yeah, it's about to break yeah. over. <coughs> it seems to be. Uh, seems to have lines. Seems good. to be okay. It's just coming off the center line now. Got a bit of curling to do yet. Too late to play that little tick. No, I think there's enough curl now to get behind that, Rob. That's going to okay. be uh, that's a fine shot there. It forces so Stacy to play over that way, yeah. which is what Heather wants. So Stacy playing either or here, if you get the shot rock or if you get the guard. Or well, she could, if she rubs the tie guard, it opens it up. If she rubs the middle blue one, she could end up behind the corner guard, but open it up that side a bit again. So lots and of options. Just can't. I think she just can't be heavy here. Got to give it a, a chance to make the shot, and it's probably deep enough by the guard they can probably get it out anyway. Working hard to get it by the guard. Looks like it's going to be okay. And there you go. Oh, there we go. And a roll back in. Nope. On the nose. Pretty much. Fine throw. So, rocks in play. Which there by is, Erica Curtis. You know, Heather doesn't mind the rocks in play, and especially with two of them right now behind the T line, and she's going to tap this one behind. Well, Rob, when you're down three, even if they're the other color stones, rocks in play are your friend. Are your friend. Yeah, especially behind that yep. uh, that D-line. Just got a quick update there. Uh, Kenny Pettigrew made two absolute beauties, and uh, Nathan uh, Young missed the last rock. So Ken Pettigrew steals two in the eighth to go up five to three over young Nathan Young. Young Nathan Young. Yeah. Okay, here's Jessica. She's uh, looks like she's. Got lots of weight for this. She yeah. does want to tap it back. This shot a bit. needs to be duplicated again. But it looks a little strong here, Rob. She's going to get a little flip, a little roll. Oh, okay. Didn't get the roll. Left the other one back in the back. A little more curl would have got a little more of a roll there, which would have been beneficial. But it's still uh, accessible for Team Curtis. Same type of rock control weight here. Let the sweepers control the amount of curl. Erica Curtis, a third, throws it, and uh, looks good. And now you see the girls get on it pretty quick. Line looks a hair tighter. Ooh, just a just lick on touch the, the top one. Okay. <laughs> well, that, uh, that surprised the girls a bit, I think, because they weren't sweeping that first, so they must have jumped a little bit. I think you're going to see a strong play down of these back two here now. Yep, so the indication is, and I think, the freeze. Being down three, they need, uh, they're need. they going to need uh, Chess Boyson to make a good throw here. If they can get this locked down, it's going to go a long way to securing a deuce. Okay, 
Jess is on her way. Important shot. Girls are looking at it, just keeping it clean. That's a good indication that the weight is close. Over the hog now, you can see Laura starting to work it a little bit more. Ah, the line's getting in the way a little bit from him now. Mm -hmm. uh, sort of in the middle of two shots. Still not, a, still not a bad shot, but you know, it would have been better probably if it was frozen. But uh, Team Strong can still work with that. But it may give a. It's going to be close to a double, I think, for a possible double for. Uh, Stacy Curtis here. I think they're close enough, even though it's fairly flat. I think about half a rock. She may be able to squeeze the second one over far enough to lie to three. And that's what she's going to play. I think that's what she's playing here. Okay, looks like a little decision well, she may just play time. The hit, hit and roll would be fine, but I think she might be able to make a double. Well, she's looking at it again now. Okay. So does she just tighten her ice, or uh, I'm not sure she she's did something with the. They might they may but I'm not sure they haven't indicated they may just be playing a hit and roll behind that blue yeah. one in the 12 foot. But I think because they're so close, if you hit Stacy De uh, Curtis can throw enough weight. If she hits two thirds of her own, she can push that. Yellow rock into four foot, right. at least two feet over, mm -hmm. which would probably end up lying. They might end up lying two or three at that point in time. And even if she rolls right next to it, uh, Team Strong still has to deal with that at yep. the end of the day. Yep. Bottom line: make this first one go away, and then then worry about the roll. So Stacy's on her way now. Looks like a nice controlled weight hit. Oh, now they've called Camille on herd. I think she's by the guard. Looks good. Very nice by the guard. Yeah. Nestles in that's a nice shot. Blue. Yeah, that's 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 quite nice. So good oh. shots there. High fives all around. Now Heather's got. I got some. my opinions, Rob. What do you think Team Strong should do here? She needs to make sure she she's can secure a deuce. So can she just play a little split and split that one in behind? But don't don't know what that does with the the shooter. Interesting. I can. I like coming across what Heather's just tapping yeah, there now. Yeah. Push the yellow one back to get the freeze. Yeah. Flip over, try to corner the, the blue one shot rock. So you're second and third. Mm -hmm. So Devro, if she plays the back one, may end up jamming. Then Strong has a crack at three. Okay. If she plays the second shot. She may jam it, hit the blue, and come back on one of the back ones anyway. It still brings three into play. So, okay. So but again, I'm not surprised Team Strong Heather saw that because, again, both these skips have a lot of experience. And being able to look at the full head and how you're trying to accomplish, how do you get three points out of this situation? Or, or not how you get three, how do you give yourself a chance, chance for three? A chance, yeah. It makes, yeah. You'd really like to lock up a two. Well. By playing for three, if you make this shot, right. there's a good chance you're going to get two. two. Right. But you have a chance at potentially yeah. three. Yeah, and we've uh, we've seen some strange things. And again, Devereaux made a good shot, but it still opened up the door because of the way the rocks are lined up. Right. That strong, if she makes this shot, is going to bring two into play for sure. So at this point, position is everything at the end of this. Okay, here's Heather. Here we come. Delivered. So they're off and on, and uh, oh, now they're both on it pretty hard, so it means it's curling. This, she's got to get by that. That was by the guard. Oh, nice, tight. No. They had to be on it a bit sooner. They yeah, had to move that yellow one back. Interesting. She's lying too, and, and not easily removable. Well, you could still jam both of them. Yep. Yep. If you hit them wrong, if you, and it wouldn't, it, just a little mm -hmm. miscue here. This is a They're not going to be easy to get out. The easiest one to get out, Rob, is the one on the right-hand side. Just uh, slash it through. Right. The, the, if it takes the, the one on the yeah, and and just give up the, the two. I mean. And just give up the two. You try to do something strange here. And but if you try to get the double, 
the one header just through jams on right. the one on the left, yeah. and the other one yeah. comes straight back on yeah. one of the back two blues, and you're still and your shooter where they're staggered spins off. Mm. Yeah, it would. That's right. Yeah. So now it looks so like it looks like that's the call. It looks like she's just going to try to take that that I, one. And on I, the top. I can't see where she has the broom here. So it's just, just trying to take yeah. the one. She's just going to try to take the one that's which on one? The one that's on the right side of center. So okay. That's half buried. That's the the one that's half buried. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, buried by the blue, sorry. Right? Okay. Yeah. So the one on the center line, yeah. The one on. Well, she could. I think playing that is possible. Now, well, she, you she can pick one out, and you can make them. You can, you can still make the double in that jam, but it's so fine a line this here. This is fine. Yeah, this is fine to, to, to get. It would be a good to shot to get it. If you, she makes makes one or both here one. without jamming, yeah. it would be a really good shot. Oh, yeah. I think if she gets one without jamming something, she's going to be happy. All right, Stacy Curtis, her last rock and we're in away. the ninth end, oh. and they are on this go. right away. This is on the oh, I, this is going to be trouble. Oh, they're working it hard. They're working it hard. She's by. And she gets by, and it's going to be the one, and she gets okay. away with the yeah. She puts it through. Get, so that's a good shot. Shot called, shot made. Yep. Good sweep and good team shot there. Looked like there was a little bit of panic for a while. Looks like it for a second there, yeah. That yeah, just keeps everybody honest. Little revolution is very is good every now and again. So that's a good shot. But now Strong needs to finish this end off with a, a good draw to the four foot for a deuce and make it a one point game coming home. Again, if that's the case, whether she gets one here or two. Uh, Team Curtis is going to have the same game plan in mind, playing in the tent end. Just try to keep the front open and make sure if they do get in trouble that uh, Stacy Curtis has a draw or a hit to win. And Strong, whether it's one or two here, are going to just try to get guards up front and try to get something going in the rings. <laughs> so the game plan is probably going to be the same, whether it's a one or two points here, but a two points will go a long way for Team Strong to keep, keep the game close. This looks like it's going to be pretty close here. And looks like a fine shot and a great sweep by the front end. Two points for Team Strong. And it's going to be an 8-7 game going into the 10th end with Team Curtis with the hammer. And we're going to take a short inter-end break here. And we'll be back in a minute. Okay, here we are, folks, back at the 19, or 19, 2023 Newfoundland Labrador Scottish uh, Provincial Championship. And here we are in game one, and it's uh, Team Curtis versus Team Strong. And the start of the 10th end, Team Curtis is carrying a one point lead into the 10th with Hammer. So we just saw the first rock thrown up by uh, the Heather Strong team, and it was a, it's a long guard which is fine. She's going to try to get a double, a double center line guard established. And, but it's not on the center line. So Team Curtis is going to try to play the tick. Now, if you remember, we talked about this game has a no tick rule, but the rock has to be on the center line. This rock is not on the center line, so there is going to be a, in this game, is going to be the first tick attempt. And, uh, Coming down the sheet, it looks pretty close. Sweeping here now to get a, try to get the tick in play. 
and they just went by. So it was pretty close, but Team Strong is going to try to play a guard here now, probably just a foot or so in front of the rings behind that. And back in action now is my color guy, Rob Thomas, and he just missed our first tick attempt. Oh, I see. Okay, because it was off the center line. It was just off the center okay. line, and she just, just heard it. So again, to go back to the rule, if that's on the center line, no touch, eh? No touch. So Heather's trying, I'll be just said Heather's trying to play this now around the guard, about a foot in front of ring, so they're lined up, but there's makes it really hard for a double peel. And so right now this is about in front of the house and as much separation as possible from that rock that would be in zone one. Looks good, for the, Laura. For the viewing audience that aren't aware, we from the hog line to the back line is broken up into uh, a number of zones. In front of the house, the hog line, we, call, we refer to it as zone one, two, and three. One being the first five or six feet over the hog line. Zone two or the middle feet. And zone three would be the two or three feet in front of the rings. So that's a pretty good shot there by two pretty good shots by uh, Laura Strong. They got the double center line guard established. So and now Team Curtis is going to play the come around. Okay, so that changes Team Curtis's mindset now and say, can't try a tick or anything, let's go. Let's get first in. First in. You could play the tick again, but it wouldn't be as advantageous if you make it because it's still, right. you're going to see another guard come from Team Strong again. But this is, looks like a really nice come around. From yeah, Camille Burke has had pretty good draw weight all games. So all games. Yeah, that's a nice setup there. She's had a solid game, no doubt. And that's a great shot. And the fact that, what makes that a good shot, Rob, not only is it behind, but it's full eight foot. So it's four feet in front of the T line, and it narrows down the scoring area for Team Strong right. yeah. in a big way. And I don't know if Strong really wants to get rid of that rock. They're going to hope to try to get behind it somewhere down the road. They might be doing that now, are they? They, they might be. It looks like I think the call was to corner it, but okay. if they can get around and bring it a little deeper, it might be there on his own. Okay, so they got shot rock at the back of the mm -hmm. forefoot. Okay. And Rob, as we used to say, days gone by, game on. Game on, that's right. So now Stacy going up to <laughs> to take off the middle one because I guess that's a little more dangerous. The high one is, Correct. is not technically uh, as much in play because it can curl both ways behind it. But, so Stacy is asking her sister now to take this off and she's calling to curve it so it must be a little bit outside well a straight peel is fine but it. Oh. Takes it but leaves it so not a not a great All right, we're going to play another guard from strong here now oh, quick again sorry quick update there because after uh, Pettigrew's big three or two he, he gave up a three to Nathan so right now Nathan Young is up six to five coming home but Pettigrew has last rock I'll keep you posted so here's Brooks second shot she's playing the guard it looks like it's coming over and gonna be in good shape nice weight the girls bring that over close to the side yeah, line. that's a good shot now what people might realize that out in the viewer land that, you know, Curtis could play a come around draw here, but the downside is if you don't make it right, you're playing into Team Strong's hands. So the, the better call here is to try to open up the front a bit. So a reminder, it's <coughs> Curtis is up one, but does have last rock in this final end. So and they're trying to make a double peel here. They're on and off. It looks like they're going to be pretty close. The first one. Oh, oh jam the on jam. the second one. So now you'll see Heather go up right there, tap a guard, and uh, just as uh, the main thing is just guard up the shot. Well, she got a couple of options here. If she doesn't think that Devro can get to the face of that blue one, she might play the come around, the wide come around on the intern side. No, nope, they're going to call a timeout. Okay, a timeout. Okay, but I, th I, okay. I think that's pretty close to being able to get to the nose of it. Yeah. So let's play the same game. Now they've got uh, Cunningham coming out for uh, 
Team Strong and Gene Trickett's coming out. So you'll be uh, Team Cunningham's, or sorry, Team uh, Cur or Strong's uh, coach right now. What well, I, I think if they play the guard and then Team Curtis comes around and she's in front of the T-line, what Team Strong would have done is take away a run back up for them to get rid of the shot rock. Mm -hmm. And because if you're good, I don't think there's there's not a lot as much curl with with the hit weight on the intern side. So the, the, what they're talking about, do they play the guard or do they play the come around now? So if they play the yeah. come around, Curtis is still going to have that run back on that blue one. Now, again, they had to make it. If they don't make it, well, then the, there's advantage goes back to Team Strong. She couldn't end up lying two when Stacy goes to shoot her last rock. Mm -hmm. So the best yep. way to steal one is to lie two. <laughs> Obviously, but it, you know, it would bring a game. The game would be on the line. So, with that rock, the yellow rock behind the T line, does that make a difference in the call? It does because if they come around and they're in the top of the four foot, the slash on the blue one for Team Curtis would only affect the top one. It still wouldn't get shot rock at the back. So, if they do that and split everything off, Heather Strong can still come around that long guard and my one and two, and there's no takeout. Mm -hmm. Then Heather, or then Curtis has to draw. She can't draw on the other side of the sheet because of that yellow guard that they just ticked over. Right. Okay. So. Okay. So it limits. It, there, you can't. You, hit, you try to always keep your access points to the four end, to the four foot open. One side is gone. I haven't to, seen the, the indication pin. yet, but on this side of the ice, they're obviously they must be playing up front, Mark. Not necessarily. No, they might okay. be coming around here to the T line. Okay. I don't think you can get around to the pin the outside, around right? the outside. Okay. Well, Heather didn't, uh, she kept her cards close. She didn't show us anything. No. So I we'll think see I by Jess's line here now. I don't, I think that's too much ice for the guard. But again, uh, we'll see. Okay, they're not touching it. So this, this is, this is, a, this looks like it must be a guard. Because, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's that that, that was the ice. Yeah. That they are it's interesting. The so they must think that, uh, that, that, that shot is very accessible. It's a little touch on that one and there that's going to be just fine. Okay. Now. Yeah, they never indicated to us what the car was, yeah. even though they, obviously they would have known. Yep, yep. So, Stacy now. So. Uh, Curtis is going to try to double these off now by the looks of it. And what I, <coughs> what I, what the angle I see is if they get a lot of that, that, that first one that her broom is over. Could come back in the rings. Running straight back. Yeah. And you and I around, being around a lot. We've seen yeah. we've seen this happen. You got to see the angles. Good and Here's bad. Erica probably a little tight cuz they started sweeping it right away. See what happens coming over. She hits and there it comes back. Oh. <laughs> That's not what they wanted. So with that one coming back, it leaves. That's a bit strong. of a mistake for team Curtis. Yeah. Now Strong's lying too. Uh, you throwing to, the guard. You had to see that any way you hit that first one, that second one was going to come back. That's just, yeah. Okay. Now, now, Mark, like you said, now Stacy could end up drawing against the game instead of the tie. Absolutely. And that's and a big she difference. she started off with great draw weight, and then she missed a couple of draws, and then she made one. So I, her confidence is probably not where it was at the start of the game on her driveway. But again... All these teams use stop clocks now, so they would know what the speed is. And, you know, they're experienced players, so I don't know how, if that's going to be much of an issue. So I'm not sure what, I'm not sure what the call was there. Mark. It was out front. Oh, my goodness. So she's coming a little deep here. That was supposed to be a tight guard. Hmm. That's not where they wanted to stop it for sure. No, that's... That's a little bit of a mistake there. I mean, she had guard weight on her first one. They never really swept it, so she probably could have got away with throwing the same weight on her first rock and let the sweepers mm -hmm. do their job and bring it a couple of more feet. So I think Stacy's just called a hit on the top one and stay there. <coughs> well, I think they're pretty close to side by side. You could make yep. the double there and open them right up. Okay, Camille is on. They're on and off. Good sign. Okay. Uh, okay, one and rolls in. So now Strong is lying two. Behind There's a tight guard the on him. You can 
probably hear the commotion in the background. Lots of great shots being made on the well, other races. There's so many good shots to be made. The fans are going wild up there. Fun to watch. While they're discussing, I'll just tell you that Mc, uh, McNeil Lambswood put a big steal of two on the board uh, in the ninth end against Simmons. So he's up uh, six to four now after nine against Simmons, who's two and zero in the standings. So it's a big, uh, big game for Ryan, young Ryan. All right, in our side here, Heather has. I think the call was the center line top just in front of the Remax sign. Okay, you see that uh, well, Heather, Laura got her hands up, indicating his own two. His own two, which would be a bit high. A I little think. bit higher. Mm -hmm. Well, I think if it comes a little deeper, it gives uh, Stacy Curtis a, a, a run back slash, and potentially get the shot rock yep. out. Yep. Okay, here's Heather. The girls are off it. So no, she's she's coming down now. It's almost to the hog line here, it's and certainly seems to be on she, doesn't wanna be on she doesn't want to be deep. She doesn't want to be deep. That's coming probably a little tighter than they want it. Okay, that's not bad. That's a tough double, but I think you might see see them hit their own here. Oh, really? Eh? Okay, and here we go. We got another timeout. This time we're going to bring out Gene Trickett for uh, Stacy Devereaux's team, Stacy Curtis's team. Make sure everything well, is. Well, that's they're looking at. Erica just indicated the double on the top two yellows, Rob, but that's a yeah. pretty thin double. All right, so well, um, options here, Mark. Well, you can play that thin double. You probably got to hit about a, a, a thin half, yeah. and then you're still going to give uh, you strong a come around. Come around, her probably. Yeah, the and if you and if she sinks it and buries it, you're going to have to draw the four for, for one for the game. If they don't make it and you and you and you hit it on the nose and come back, strong's going to be drawing to lie three, and then you got to make a tougher draw. Okay to win the game. If you play on your own, the yellow, the, your blue one, mm -hmm. and you drive it straight back, you, you could the potentially kill two, yep. you, you end up being shot rock, or you could hit it back and roll underneath the yellow one, still be shot rock. Yep. You could hit and roll and roll over farther yeah. under the corner guards and be shot rock. Yep. So I think that's the better shot. You got a lot more options where you can be in better shape. Yep. Uh, yeah, you can see Julie is actually pointing that out now. Look, we can do this, or this happens, we can do this. So looking at the different options. The yeah. thing here is you just got to make sure you hit the, the yellow rock. If you don't make the yellow and you hit it through the hole or wide, oh, yeah. then you're going to have Some a problem because yeah. then Strong is going to come down and tap her own. Yeah. And then you're making, you can't even afford to make the double because you roll away, you give up the seal of two. You got to make a tough draw. Yeah. You, she might have them go wide to win the game. This so is she got to make sure yeah. she makes contact mm -hmm. As long as she makes contact with the blue, blue rock behind this, side, yeah. she'll have a, yeah. a straightforward, Something. albeit maybe a, a tougher, tough tr a tough shot, but a very makeable shot but to win the game. And possibly against one. Possibly only against yeah, one. Uh, which, would, which would calm the nerves a little bit. <laughs> All right, Stacy's settled in the hack. Getting ready to shoot here now. Big shot, Stacy Devereaux up one, coming home with last, but uh, Heather's uh, managed to create a little havoc here. Straight back raise on her own. Great release. Oh, Julie jumps on it right away. You can hear Erica shouting. It looks pretty close That's from good. here, Rob. There's the contact, and there it is. So, 
Yeah. Double on. Oh, and makes the double on the back. <coughs> Great shot, eh? Looks like yeah, looks like that happened. Like I think didn't somebody just talk about yeah, that? I think somebody, some coach I know, just. I think that that was a that was as good as she could have done on that shot. So a little bang bang on the nose here. Well, now Heather, Heather got to make a little tap tap, and then Stacy's going to have. Well, yeah, she can make a double to win, or she can draw against two. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, being one up, you'd probably. Unless it's an impossible double, take on the double. Yeah, I, I, because I, if something goes wrong on a, on a draw, like a pick or something, you lose the game. At least if you're hitting, yeah. worst case, you figure you at least get one out. Okay, so the first <clears throat> excuse, first big thing is Heather's got a hit stick stick, and uh, then we'll see what the final rock of the game is. So here it is, Heather's last rock in the 10th end. So Heather needs to make this now to get the, a force on for, uh, for Team Curtis. On the way, nobody's touching it yet. You might see. Got a little bit. Of, got a little bit. Got a little bit of time to curl. Oh, here it comes. No, looking good. Uh, curl a bit more. Okay. Uh, open hit though. Open hit to win. Yeah, I think so it's pretty. That's much as good as it gets yeah. when uh, when yeah. you're in a curling game. You give somebody gives you say you have an open hit to win in ten. You'll take it every time. Yeah, yeah. yeah a straight hit and stay for. Didn't quite curl enough. Team for uh, team Curtis. Well, it's been interesting, Mark, to say the least. Uh, uh, the, the four out of nowhere, and then the the pick, and we've we've seen it all this game. Absolutely, Rob. Very entertaining game. Probably more ends with rocks and play than we had anticipated. Uh, yeah, I think definitely so. But again, I'm not surprised it was a one point game nope. going into the tenth yep. and a lot come down the last rock. Mm -hmm. All right, Stacy Curtis, last rock, 10th end. The hit and stick, and she wins. The hit and roll out, and we're going to have some free curling. There it is. It's on the outside. It looks good. Now you got Camille in to curve it over. Still hanging on the center. Uh, she's fine, I think. She should be good. Yep. There, there it go. is, the hit and, and stick. And uh, a 9-7 victory for Team Curtis in round one. Of the 2023 Provincial Scotties Championships. Friend, Vic would say make the final 9 to 7 for Stacey Curtis. So Stacey goes to 1 and 0, drops Heather to that uh, 0 and 1. Tonight's game is Heather and Sarah, Sarah Hill. Or is it. Um, sorry. I don't, there we go. My fault. No, I haven't got the schedule. I don't have it in front of me either, Rob. But, uh, anyway, we got another ladies' game tonight. Is, um, no, here we go. The, the game tonight would be um, Curtis. Curtis and uh, Hill. Curtis and Hill, and uh, myself and uh, Sporty Bragg will be back on the mics here. And uh, not sure which game will show. It's either O'Larian Skeins or Pettigrew and, and Lambswood. Well, well, Rob, I think tonight both games are being televised with commentary. Oh, so okay. we got O'Leary versus Skeins and Pettigrew versus McNeil Lambswood. Well, we look forward to that, and uh, what a great, uh, what a great game we all got to watch here tonight. And uh, Stacy Curtis comes out on top of uh, Heather Strong, and uh, she takes the early one and O record. Um, can only give you one more final right now. I think that uh, Ryan McNeil's Lambswood did beat Andrew Simmons, so. They, they're, they're now 2-1, and one and uh, so is Simmons, so that's close. There's a couple of games left, but keep an eye on the uh, nlcurling.ca and for the scores, and uh, you can see it all there. So for now, from uh, Rob Thomas and Mark Noserty, thanks for viewing, and we'll see you later tonight. Okay, folks, everybody go have some supper, and we'll see everybody again at 730.